Okay, we are live. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, we'll start the meeting of the studies committee. Uh, Nexus is here with a presentation. All right. Thank you. Talk to what he's in charge of presentation. Okay. Um, today's agenda. So basically, before we get into kind of the deep dive of um, an option. We can, I want to review, highlight some of the community survey, um, oper operational costs and tax impact, um, the facility task force and staff feedback that we've gotten, uh, alternative funding options that just kind of have them explained to you because they'll be in what we talk about later. And then we'll, we'll go through the whole plan line by line or as much detail as you want and then talk about potential next steps. So before I get into that, I kind of wanted to just throw this out here is the timeline for a potential November referendum. So it's kind of right up front. Um, you know what has to be done by when to make it happen in November. So the survey was done, you know, the community survey was done January through March. Uh, community tours were done January through March, um, as well as we had the last task force meeting last month. Um, the facility task force. We had three different meetings for that as well. Just um, then now through kind of the end of May would be the facility committee reviewing what we have and then in hopes of coming up with a recommendation for the board. So the, and then the thought is to have another, we're calling it a brush fire survey, just kind of do another quick, once you come, you know, come up with an option that you recommend to the board and if the board agrees, then they would approve just a brush fire survey for the community to kind of test the community on how they feel about that option. Um, so then the brush fire survey honestly would be done mostly in June, maybe the beginning of July, the thought process is there. And then with board approval for a referendum coming, I put, I believe that is your July board meeting date, um, would be at the end of July, you could potentially call a special meeting and have it done in early August as well. So the review and comment is due on August 13th. Um, and then the campaign would go through November with the November 7th um, election date. So. So I just picked out a few, you know, highlights of the community survey. Hopefully most of you have kind of seen that. Um, so this is a good slide. Honestly, it's above average on people out there knowing that the facility, they have needs, you know, so that is a high percentage from what we've seen in the past. And so that's a good thing that the public really does see that there is a need. Um, this one, you know, you have 50% persuadable. Usually what you would want the against all is 27 and the um, for all is 19. You kind of want those usually to be even. So you're right off the bat, you're at like a minus eight kind of deficit. So just saying that, you just know what you're going to have to overcome to get it passed. All right. So the solid majority believes Bird Island should be used as something, you know, like throughout the public that shows that something should be done at Bird Island. But as this slide, and hopefully you've seen Peter Leatherman talk this, this really doesn't tell us anything. You know, it's kind of like a, it is not clear cut on everything, you know? So people were really torn on what Bird Island should, what should happen to Bird Island. And then for the property tax increase, you can see that the top two, building infrastructure and safety and security, really stood out as, you know, those two are what's important to the community. And then some of the other stuff can or cannot be included. It's kind of middle of the road. But then the stuff that they just were not in support of was the swimming pool, the auditorium, and the stadium and parking lots. The community just was not a big supporter of those three. And then this one, as you've seen, um, the biggest thing, you know, usually you want the nothing to be less than 35%. So it was kind of high to start off. But if you average it all out, a tax tolerance is about $15 a month, okay? So with that, 
you can kind of see the 131 is what we've been told is the average home price in the area, okay? So um, $15 a month right now comes to about 27 million. That is conservative. So if rates stay, you know, if rates stay where they are right now, that would actually be about 30 million. And there was a quarter point increase and that's already been factored in. So this is, and hope I think all of you have seen it. It's basically the school district put together operating costs and I kind of simplified it before it was A, B, C, and D, you know, broken out. What I kind of did here was took the numbers that the school district put together one building versus two buildings on the operational costs. And so if you look at the bottom, it's about 2.25 versus 2.75. It's about 500,000 difference to run two buildings versus one building. So if you decided to run Bird Island as an elementary, you'd have to run an operational component as well as the other. And so that takes a portion of it. You can click the next. So with that, if you go way to the right, option two, $500,000 annual revenue for the operating, that costs an additional $17 a month. So when you subtract that, I mean, that's taking basically all your money that, you know, in the tax tolerance and paying for just the operational component. That's not getting any facility upgrades at all. And we ran 300 there just because uh, it, it, it's just to show you what our magnitude, if people want to argue, um, that, well, it's not quite 498, I think so it's less than that. We just arbitrarily said, if it, even, if, even if the second school is $300,000 annually budget impact, what would that be? And that's still 1046 from the operational standpoint. So we've been, um, kind of first like doing this for 30 years and a lot of times we're, we're tasked with closing the consolidating schools. And when we calculated the past, typical school closure saves between an elementary size now, between four and 600,000. Never told that to Jim and the business staff. They ran their own numbers and came up to what, 490, 470. So it's uh, it's what we've seen elsewhere. And it's, uh, it, it's unequivocal. It, it does cost more to run to the buildings. And there's just a budget impact to that. That's all we're saying. And you can do whatever, the referendum can be whatever you want. Okay, so like I mentioned, we had the third facility task force meeting a couple of weeks ago. Um, we showed the Peter Leatherman, the community survey, the results of that. And then at the end of that, they were able to ask questions. And from there, then I, um, we sent out uh, basically a, it's called a survey monkey where they could ask, we asked five different questions. Okay, so the first one was, should the question on the ballot be 30 million or less? So this is right after, you know, they saw the results. And so about 58% said yes, 42% said no, okay, from the facility. Now keep in mind, it's a 12 people answered. It's a small sampling, but it's still the task force that has toured the buildings, you know, they've been through, they've seen um, the needs. So then what percentage of the 30 million should go towards Bird Island? And it came just under 15% is what should be used of that 30 million should be used for Bird Island. And that was like an average of all the different, you know, results that came in. So what should Bird Island money be used for? And when you look at this, I mean, update sports and performance came out very high as well as community use. Um, there's nothing for renovating for an elementary. There's a small percentage that said early childhood or nothing. Then it was asked, should there be a second question asking above 30 million for additional items? And that was a pretty strong, almost 90%, that 85% that came out that said, yes, there should be a second question above 30 million. And should the district continue to use, oh, this, sorry, I, this went into staff feedback at this point. It threw me off for a little bit, sorry. <laughs> Um, so this was back, oh, it was last summer, I believe even, is when we um, surveyed the staff. So before any of the results came out, they didn't know the tax tolerance, they didn't know anything. So it was just, they were asked a whole bunch of questions and I just kind of picked out a few to show you. So do you feel the district should continue use Bird Island facility for some functions or programs? Um, of the 39 that answered, it was about just under 40% said yes. and. Um, just over 60 said no. 
do you think bold community should support reinvesting in portions? And, you know, about 55% said yes to reinvest in Bird Island. So those are the main two. And honestly, if you want to see, I did have um, a spot where I had like the staff feedback came back with a bunch of comments. And honestly, most of the, it basically said, if so, for what purpose? You know, what should Bird Island be used for? And it was mainly there, a gym, you know, the audit, like maybe practice space. Um, I'm trying to read through some of it. Honestly, almost all of it, and you can see this, basketball community events, athletics, games, um, I mean, it was honestly, and I can show you that later if anyone's interested. So with that, Mike, do you want to talk sure. a little bit about the? Sure. So <clears throat> up until now, um, there's kind of been an implied um, portion of, of our entire discussion that has talked about a referendum. And uh, certainly to make the types of improvements that, that you're, you're looking at here, a referendum is going to be required. But we thought um, it would make sense to, to educate you on the fact that it isn't the only option. Okay, and um, Minnesota school districts have, have got uh, for certain types of improvements, the legislature has given them authority, uh, has given school boards authority uh, to make the, those improvements, and they really fall into two categories. Um, the first is uh, w would be additional money, uh, and, and this would involve would have a local tax impact, but it does not um, require a referendum. There's th three main components. Uh, the first is what's known as, as lease levy. So this would be to put small additions on a building. And it, it goes back, uh, the, the genesis of it is years ago, like 25, 25 years ago or so, school districts, actually probably 40 years ago, school districts, when they needed some additional space, they would put up what they in, uh, initially called temporary classrooms in there, essentially like mobile home trailers. Um, but then when they sat there for 20 years, they said, well, we really can't call them temporary anymore. So maybe we should call them portable classrooms. And then the, the state got involved and said, if they're going to be used that long, we need to make sure that they're up to code. And by the time you met all the code requirements, it was more expensive than just building an actual building. And yet school districts couldn't go out to referendum to, to put a small addition on it. It, it. it didn't make sense. So the legislature said, you know what? Um, we'll, we'll allow you, I believe the number is up to 20% of the existing square footage will allow you to, to give you the authority. And there's also a cap on, on the total dollar amount to put a small addition on the building. The school board has authority to do that. The second is IEQ or indoor air quality and LTFM is long-term facilities maintenance revenue. You already have a portion of long-term facilities maintenance revenue that, that's built into the budget every year, but you also have for uh, indoor air, air quality types of improvements, so HVAC types of improvements, air conditioning, things of, of, of that nature. Uh, Brent and I were actually involved with the legislation this is back in 2000, 2001. Uh, we, we helped craft the initial language and basically created the case of why it made sense. And the legislature, in, in essence, said, you know, this goes back almost 25 years now, said, you know, for these types of, of improvements or, or the, the types of needs that are affecting that, that the health and safety of our children, that shouldn't go to right or that shouldn't be required to go to referendum. We will give our board's authority to address that. You certainly can still put it into a referendum, but you do have an, have an alternative means of, of, of addressing it. Um, and uh, so, so that is, um, a, a, again, additional monies that can be bonded, that sort of thing, very similar to a referendum. The third component is kind of the same thing of it has to do largely with hard services, specifically parking lots. Um, the legislature in, in essence said, you know, we, we're letting these things crumble and by not addressing them, it's getting more and more expensive and costing our taxpayers more. So how you know how is that helping us? So they gave boards authority to address things like parking lots. They basically gave you board authority or levy authority to do that. Okay, again, it doesn't mean that you have to use it. It doesn't mean that you can't put it into a referendum. It, it, these are just alternative approaches that we, we want to make sure that you, you are aware of. They are very, very commonly used, been around literally like pushing 25 years. Um, and, and, and the names have changed a little bit, but if you go back to the genesis, especially of, of the IEQ portion, that goes back to around, like I say, around 2000. Um, and year one of, not that I know every district in the state, but of the 350 districts that we have, a vast majority of that, that resource in one home or another, so it's not as little something. So, so that is new or additional money, but again, it, it does have a local tax impact. The second area would have uh, no tax impact. In fact, one actually has a negative tax impact, which 
that gets everyone's attention in a good way. But the first is capital facilities bonds. Um, this this is in, in essence a loan. And if, if you have you, know, you have a certain amount of capital money each and every year, um, and say you have fifty thousand dollars a year, but you have a, a, a half a million dollar project, well, you can't afford to pay for it. You you do have the ability to get a loan by by way of a bond, so the interest rate is very low, and then you use your capital dollars to pay that back. Okay, so instead of trying to save the money up, you can borrow the money and then pay for it as you go because inflation is still outpacing interest rates for uh, for taxes and bonds. So again, so it's less expensive to do the work now, pay for over time, as opposed to save up. The second area is uh, facilities maintenance bonds, which is bonded long-term facilities maintenance. So I mentioned that there were two forms of this. Uh, IAQ, LTFM, long-term facilities maintenance. Sorry, that's just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, that's additional money. This is money that school districts uh, were given about, uh, time slips away me here, but about 10 years ago. And it was, it's for specific, uh, uh, in essence, deferred maintenance. You can't make upgrades with it, but you can replace like for like, okay? Each district has a certain amount that's allocated to them annually. And um, it's uh, it was initially designed as a pay-as-you-go program, but then again, somebody said, you know what? It would make sense if we could bond this. And the advantage of bonding it is you can make larger improvements up front. Also, when you bond it, uh, state aid kicks in uh, as well as I believe the ag credit, would be correct. And so actually the it'll cause a tax decrease because when you when you do pay as you go, the local community pay, pays the full freight. When you bond it, the state actually pays a portion of it. So it's the same, the, the payments are the same, but the local community pays less. So it actually causes a slight tax decrease. And then the last uh, is Self-funded improvements, maybe you know through operational efficiencies, or or do you have funds on hand, you know, uh, uh, fund balance, and last but not least, it is ESSER money, which is money that uh, is still left over from from the pandemic. The federal federal money that was doled out to school districts, uh, ESSER three is the last round of that, and uh, the current um, uh, expiration date, if you will, when it has to be spent by, is September thirtieth of twenty twenty four. So that that's actually creeping up on us here. So again, you have two different, uh, uh, or uh, several different um, approaches here that can be used as an alternative to a referendum. And then funding options in terms of voter approved, obviously we know we're very familiar with bond referendum, we've been we've talking about it for quite some time. There is also, excuse me, an operating levy. Uh, I don't believe your district has one, but most or many, probably 90% of school districts in the state have an operating levy, which is, uh, they used to be known as excess operating levies. That was back when 15% of districts had them. Now 90% have them. So it's just called an operating levy. And that's used to fund just what it says, operational expenses. So teacher salaries <coughs> of, of, of that nature. Those are typically approved on a uh, on a 10-year basis. There, there's no set amount, but typically they're approved for 10-year terms. Um, you don't need to be experts on this now, but as we start talking to you about, uh, you know, first thing is to zero in on the scope. And then we've got a number of different of, of things that we're able to do. We'll I'll give, give you a sample later of our, our cash flow model that'll show you how we can fine tune the program and potentially make it more cost effective despite working with different financial terms, uh, the length of the term, different insurance, things of that nature. Um, do we do everything all at once or do we use, you know, do we do it all voter approved or do we use some district levy authority? Again, things for us to just think about as we go forward. Okay, any questions? All right, I'm going to jump into what we're, we dubbed the unity plan. Based on what we learned from the circular other survey, um, there is obviously a financial limit in the community, right? We can't give everybody everything, um, but we want to give everybody something. Um, and we've been working with you and in your community for a year. Okay. And we have people bend our ear about we should do this, and then I have people bend my ear the 180 degree opposite the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just the way it is, right? And, and nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Everyone's got their bend in, everyone wants a certain thing, and I, I understand that. But to get a referendum passed, we have to find something that we have to find a common ground, right? Otherwise, it's just, it, you're not gonna get anything passed, and the building just gets more and more tired. You're gonna have harder, talk about harder, uh, more expenses on repairs retaining staff, all that has to come into play. So we got to come up with a plan that unifies the two, two communities as best we can. And you saw the data that Ellie shared. Um, I, 
I, you know, I think there's a general consensus that we need to do something with Bird Island, um, and uh, this plan does that. What you're going to see, it's basically, it's plan A. If you remember, we had our A, B, C, and D, E before. It's really plan A, and how could we take cost out of it? Because even A was way over what Peter Leatherman said we could afford, right? So we challenged the team to take costs out without reducing quality, without um, putting you at risk for any big expenditures in five years, 10 years, it's still a long-term solution. And that's what we want to share with you here. So um, I'm going to put the, uh, where's that? Or, oh, back there, my breath. I think it'd be easier for me to talk to the board. Um, I think that's just too small. Is this a decent look? I don't know where to put it. It's just for three mil for people over there. Um, you know what, Brent, if you maybe want to work with the other board? Yep. Does that help put people back here? You know. Just, do you, when do you want these things? I want those. I'll wait on that. Oh, okay. 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 Most people can see. All right. All right. So this looks very familiar. If you remember that the, the plan A from before, um, this plan, uh, and we'll, then we'll obviously, and then uh, same thing holds true for Bird Island. We'll get to that in a second. Very similar to what you already seen. And it really comes down to we'll go through an itemized line item as you guys can start getting the data and you can start picking and choosing what you want to include. But um, before we were before we were done with the 1922 and the two-story section over here, basically we said we can't afford to take on that two-story section. We need to reinvest in that. Um, so all we're demoing is basically this section here, the 1922. Right? What that and, and then what that allows us to do is is um, Give you a right size cafeteria slash commons, a right size kitchen that meets your needs, a true receiving area in the building. Right now we've got business up here. That is something that you can debate. Um, we could keep business in a classroom down here, but right for now it's in there. New family consumer science, new art, because art would be demoed, it's right there right now. And then this is, um, that's all in the new construction. As far as re reorganizing the building, I'm gonna work my way around this way. Elementary gets its own music, remodel elementary wing like we talked about before, giving them storage areas so they can get stuff out of the classroom and into um, give them more space in those classrooms. Fixing the little office that speech is in, give them a, a space that actually works for them. Giving you breakout space. If you remember breakout space, we originally didn't have in there, and then we met with your staff, the teaching staff, and they were adamant. They're like, no, we, we really need to have a uh, breakout space. Um, so we've got that uh, in a couple locations. Um, early childhood basically stays is just some some deferred maintenance, but really those those rooms are great. Don't want to spend a lot of money in there. Just you know some finishes and windows, things of that nature. Given fifth and sixth grade, given your middle school, um, you know basically consolidating the offices, get the district office so where we're sitting now would become. Jim's office becomes early childhood storage because they have a lot of stuff, a lot of it in the hallways. Let's get it out of there. Let's build a fifth uh, kind of a middle school end of the building down here with a breakout space that can be used by them and high school. And then we talked about the toilets. We another set of toilets for the high schoolers because they don't want them to share toilets with elementary. But we decided, remember, we had them up here originally. We put them down here because then you could set it up so people from using the football field could actually walk and use these toilets during the games. We'd secure that off from the rest of the building. High school, not much work down here, just deferred maintenance. Anything that's worn out would be fixed. Otherwise, it's it's in good shape. Um, getting your weight room out of here, building new weight rooms. So then you basically get this space back for a clean lab and robotics space. And then, you know, we move elementary music over here. So you get a, a career and tech head lecture space. We've cut windows in here and here. So your instructor, if people, if students are in here or here, we've got visual supervision. But it really allows you to get the classroom that's in the shop move into here metals gets more space the robotics gets out of here metals gets more space and then you can have an area for a clean lab too so if you want to do 3d printers or a elevator here or you want to do desktop um, machine coding things of that nature um we move the the instructor's office over to here in this corner take that wall out there and make open this up for small engine storage because right now metals is it's welding, it's fabrication, it is small engines, it serves a lot of different purposes. It's actually have a little a lift in there for a vehicle. So metals isn't the most accurate name for it, but that's what you guys call it, so we'll stick with it. 
but really giving them the space they need to do what they want to do. Woods Lab really turning the relabeling that construction lab. We want to cut in a larger overhead door here so they can get bigger projects in and out. So um, if you want to build sheds, you want to do a construction wall where you're teaching wiring, you're teaching plumbing, you're teaching framing, uh, all that, or finishing carpentry, anything you can teach in there. They just need to be able to get uh, larger projects in and out. We want to move your get egg used to be down here, get egg back down here. They're right now it's being taught upstairs. Egg slash, and she does teach some science, which is more earth science, that's really fine. But then we'd have horticulture storage here, horticulture FFNA space, and then this storage here is to support the uh, wood, wood shop. So she really wants to be on the lower level and um, she eventually wants to get a greenhouse and have things done that she can access. So we just need to cut a door in here so she can have exterior access and some windows into this to make it a little bit um, better space. <clears throat> this high school wing basically pretty much stays as is. Um, in fact, um, we have another option, we don't need to get it now, but I think this breakout space wants to be here and uh, we can talk about that later, but this wing, relatively minor options, except for the breakout space here, here, and here. The old facts and kitchen storage and that really poor early uh, elementary or special ed areas would get completely uh, remodeled. So you'd have a large middle school, uh, high school, and it's not one big room. It would be divvied up uh, for your two different structures. Right now you've got two structures over in your 1922 section. I forget their names. Um, they would be housed in here and you have a six, uh, sensory room and all that. So square footage works. OTPT, a bit of bigger space. We have two instructors in this elementary sped area too. We have a seclusion room and its own restroom and everything in there. And then this is sort of a little elementary breakout special ed space. Mm -hmm. Consolidate the offices. So we put district office where the high school office is, bring the elementary staff here. So when elementary kids need to go to the office, they can come right in here. Um, and we do want to have an office at the front door from a secure entry security standpoint. We do want to make this side of the building the front door, secured entrance. We, we um, demo that electrical vault that's down below that front door and build a new entry here for high school office, new fitness center. Um, and then you'd have a, a separate entrance, a new south entrance into that gym. Right now, everybody has to enter over one spot. So now we have entrance on both sides. Boiler plant stays where it is. Locker rooms stay where they are, but they get refreshed, remodeled. Um, for the most part, finishes, lockers, showers, things of that nature. There are some small little old coaches' offices that aren't used anymore. We'd rip those out and do some reconfiguration with the lockers, but um, refresh those. Now, if we are banned, banned we, we met with all these instructors, everybody we've, we're, we're referring to, we've met with all the staff. Band's in good shape. They just want to redo their, it's kind of a convoluted way into that room. Um, they want a new, entrance right into there in a double door so they can get, you know, kettle drum out for an event stuff. They just, so what they're asking for is very minor, which is great. Um, training stays where it is. The only thing we want to do there is we want to create some coaches offices in there. It's a very large for training and the coaches are just sort of on desks in there. We just need to section that off a little bit. An option, I don't have it checked in right now, but you guys can certainly check in. We came to the toilets is um, these are your main restrooms, your men's and women's right here for events. Um, we just showed a concept that if you wanted, you could leave one entry point here for ticketing. You could take the men's and women's, consolidate them into one large women's restroom, and you can make a new men's over here, and then you could enlarge your concessions. Um, it's an option. Whenever you're messing with large toilets, it's very expensive, just like in your house. Um, and, but it, you'll, you'll see the cost to do it, and you can you can prioritize that how you see fit. Gymnasium, we new seating on the a mezzanine, um, new gym floor, um, pool. Uh, you'll see how we're addressing that with LTFM dealing with the lack of vapor barrier and fixing these exterior walls and do proper dehumidification in there so you can control humidity levels so it doesn't rot your building out from the inside out. And then up here, again, these are all line item options. We show an option for an additional locker room for for your your squads or a visitor locker room and then obviously when we, if we're down with the 1922 it's got that lower multi-purpose wrestling slash pe area we have to replace that somewhere so we're replacing that up here so very similar to what you saw before with just some 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 minor tweaks upstairs 
right now chemistry is down here. We put chemistry, remodel this, um, refresh these labs for chemistry with the fume hood, um, take the wall out of the storage and reconfigure the storage for better uh, chemical storage. And biology would just get refreshed where it is. And then we've created um, a space for health. Right now health is down here. So um, kind of got a spot right above the gymnasium where the coaches go up and, and teach it. Choir is in good shape. They just want those risers out of there. And they want to combine a couple of practice rooms. It sits large enough to get a piano in there, but relatively minor um, things for choir. And we'll go through this in line item in a second. So this would house your early childhood through 12 functions. Bird Island, which you'll see saw in gymnasium, would get uh, new bleachers, new floor. Stage would get um, new lighting system, new stage floor refinish, and new uh, stage curtains. And then we'd create two new locker rooms over here on the west side out of three classrooms or two or three classrooms. Can you lift that oh, yep. board up? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Good point. So your main entrance stays here. The training stays where it is. Create two new locker rooms here on the west side. We show you options for the toilets. You'll see um, you'll see in the list project list here in a second. We've got one option there just to refresh the, the uh, public restrooms there as is, new finishes and, and um, just remodel them as in the current square footage. We've got another option to take part of that old music room and expand and give you a larger men's and larger women's restrooms. So there's a pretty good cost there. So it's something for you to contemplate. And then everything else basically, oh, oh, the old gym would get new floor and a ventilation system. It doesn't have no ventilation now. And then the areas in green, I'm just labeled as community. Um, basically no work except in the purple and the gray, these areas here, the green, the purple, the, uh, you know, the old library, the old art, these classrooms give you what you need from uh, infrastructure for heating plant standpoint, because the you know, boiler plant's in tough shape here. So, you, you know, you get lighting updated and you get the heating and ventilation updated, but that's it for now. It's just, um, and then you can, make, you, know, we can, you can, ultimate use is to be determined, right? The way I currently have it configured, you'll see in a minute, it'll make more sense is, and um, Island Hub is still pursuing funding for this side of the building. You could leave that, you could put, you know, so question one, you could have just make this, make these improvements and leave this untouched for now. You could put a question two to demo this and put a parking lot in there. You, you'll see the numbers, you've got those building block components that you can pick and choose and build a project that you can uh, collectively support. With that, let's pass out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we'll start over there. We're going to pass around. Yeah. Yeah. Help. No, that's what I have. Yeah. <laughs> that's the mom and me asking. Yeah, exactly. No, that's true. Yeah. So the first, the first page is either just what I just walked through. Yeah, just for you to take home and, and take care of that. So the first page, two, two pages is just what we have walked through. So you can flip past those. I'm getting to a big switch. Five pages of numbers. And this is where you can, this is our project selection tool, okay? So this is where, uh, I'll show you how the sheet works and we got it electronically. Uh, I can show you So 
I'll, I'll just show you up here. All right, so this sheet is set up. You see on the far left-hand column, you'll see three columns. Question one, and, and, and bear in mind, this is your tool. We've started with X's in the columns. You can move the X's wherever you want. I don't want you to think, but we, we just internally, our years experience doing this and what we know about the buildings, we took a first stab at it, okay? So far left hand column, question one. So that anything with an X in that would be in referendum question number one. Anything in the second column with an X would be in referendum question two. And again, you can pick and choose. The third column is alternative funding, what Mike talked about. Okay, and again, you can move those into the referendum. We just put them in there so they can have some good discussion about what they may be used for. And you'll, um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Then we have a, a, a facility improvement measure, description, total project budget. It's all up, all in. Everything's bid out. We save on that. Money goes to the district. And then the funding source that I've toggled to, to pay for those. And then it just sort of adds up the totals. We'll walk through this line by line with you. But how it rolls up, if you go to the very bottom, like a page five. All right, have you jump around, but I just want to kind of show you how it, how it works. So about on page five, you see the grand totals. So um, again, I, uh, you'll see right, right, right above where it says question one grand total. I've got alliance is question one inflation allowance, 5%. Inflation is still happening. This work won't be done for another year. Put that in there. I also put a note in there, plus interest earnings and bond premiums. Um, if you remember, I used to have 8% in there for inflation. Earlier version of this. Um, I cut it down to five, not, not because inflation stopped, because it hasn't. But our, when you sell bonds, uh, right now, uh, districts are getting bid premiums. So you, you sell it to, to get about 30 million of proceeds. Districts are getting like 32 million in proceeds. Okay, so um, what I'm saying is, if, if we get a bond premium, we add that to the budget. It's, it's for this project. Don't use it for something else. And the same thing with interest earnings. You you take out sell a bond for 30 million. It takes two years to spend it. While you're while we're doing construction, you have that money invested. And right now, the nice thing is that that your uh, school districts are making like two percent on that stuff. So it, it'll add up. So <clears throat> I'm just making an acknowledgement here that. That's what allowed me to take the inflation from eight to five. We're, we're substituting these things for that additional inflation. But based on what I have X in the first column on the previous five pages, you see the grand total adds up to question one of 38.5 million. We'll show you what that costs. It's about $19 a month in average home. That's more than what Peter said. So um, that's what we, that's, we're not going to decide it tonight, but that's what this group's going to be tasked with. It. Do we, do we, where do we cut? Do we keep cutting? Do we do we stretch it? Do we ask more? Do we put more than 15 on this brush fire survey? And when we give the details of why everybody gets a win in this, perhaps this community will support more than 15. That's what the survey is meant to tell us. But um, so you can see the grand totals. We had about 38 million and 38.5 in question one, we've got 3.2 in question two. And then all the alternative funding, we've got different amounts. We've got I've got toggled. 1.6 million in tax abatement. Um, that would be if you expanded the parking lot here. It hasn't been a lot. The community said no. We mixed that with the stadium, which I wish we wouldn't, but that's something, and it hasn't been a lot of talk here support for it. You don't need to do the parking lot now. You could do that three years from now. Perhaps there's more, you know, inflation's in check. Uh, <clears throat> people are more comfortable with, with, the, with the economy. You can come back and do that down the road. That's all I'm telling you. You don't have to do it now. Capital Esser, I picked some projects. I picked um, I picked the track project. No, I picked, well, we'll go through it in a minute. But I know, um, you know, if you, I, I just, I randomly picked $1.2 million. I know you've got quite a bit. Esser you might have some, um, some, some capital uh, reserves. Again, you can toggle, set that dollar amount or whatever you want. Bonded LTFM, I toggled 1.6 million. You get about 245000 a year in long-term facility maintenance revenue within your existing budget. We're not suggesting to use all of it because you're going to have other items. What we suggest and what we've done with other districts, and we'll talk more about it at the end of the presentation, is you get 245000 every year. While we're doing construction in the next three years, you're not going to be touching that very much. So you can, for, you can bond for a portion of this. First three years, you put, say, 75% of the 245. 
towards it. The next three years, you put 60%. And the next years, you know, years six through 15, you put 40%, something like that. You want to you want to encumber that less and less as time goes on because you're going to have other needs that grow over time and Denny's going to need that money. So it's just something to think about. It doesn't have to be 1.6 million, but it is something that other clients have used to reduce the referendum amount. And, and the public likes to see that you're using everything at your disposal before you come to them for more taxes. That's the key there. They want to see you bootstrap. It's an indoor quality LTFM that Mike talked about. Really, that's air conditioning. But only you got about ten million dollars worth of stuff that would qualify for that. I've only got a million pulled out right now for air conditioning, just so we can talk about it. Because you could renovate this building without air conditioning. I mean, you can, right? And you could do that. You could add air conditioning three years from now using this funding source. So it's not something you have to throw on the backs of your taxpayers right away if you don't um, don't feel it's a need. And then obviously the last was the referendum there. It's the 41750 is just question one and two. Right? So, does that make sense how it plays out? Mm -hmm. All right. And we can, um, I'll, 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 while we'll walk through this, I'm sorry, uh, we'll, we'll start at the page one here. Of, of the selection tool. It says Olivia School of Mechanical Systems. I'll let Russ, um, we heard loud and clear when we were here last time that we've got the infrastructure working. Um, and, and robust and reliable. And he's worked he and we've got contractors out there and we've sworn quite a apart. We worked with Danny and Russ has got a good plan for you here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm Rush Schumacher again for um, I've been here for a couple of times. Um, I oversee design for Nexus Solutions. So if I'm a successful referendum, you've seen a lot of me um, as we move forward. But uh, as Brent said, we took a fresh look at this. Um, what type of systems within your infrastructure, that being mechanical, electrical, fire alarm, et cetera, what needs to be replaced, right? What can be reused? What has 20 years plus of life left in it? And what can be added easily in the future? So we had Denny walked both buildings, every mechanical room, all, all the spaces that had infrastructure. And as Brent said, we brought contractors with us and we cut piping apart, steam and condensate, as well as domestic water piping at both sites, Bird Island and here, so we could actually look and assess the condition rather than guess, right? The outside of the pipe doesn't tell you what the inside of the pipe's actually doing, how well it's been treated chemically, et cetera. So with that, we, we looked at that and we all, between me, Denny, and the contractors, we each graded it from A to F, right? Uh, and and uh, surprisingly, a lot of your piping, especially at Olivia, was in really, really good condition. The chemicals have been, have been uh, well maintained here in your steam piping and condensate. The domestic water piping um, was, was uh, working well and we took it in some of the spaces that would wear the most. And according to all of us here in, uh, Bird Island, it's a different story, but here it was um, working very, very well and has 20 plus years left of life in it. However, what's happening a lot, and Denny had multiple calls while we were walking around. In fact, every time I've been out here, he gets multiple calls on stuff that's not working or fire alarm issues or air handling issues. You have a lot of air handling units. If you go to the gym, two thirds of the coil is completely covered with a metal panel because it freezes up continually. Steam and air, when you have to bring as much as you need to for a school facility with the occupants, needs a lot of outdoor air, it freezes, you know, it steams a tough medium to heat with that. However, um, you can use the steam for a lot of your, we call it terminal devices, like um, unit ventilators in your, in your core, in your entryways, suspended unit heaters in your mechanical space. If you have fin tube radiation, some of the things that don't see exposure to outdoor air, that those components can still be reutilized. So with that, we went to every air handler and we said, reuse, repair, or replace. And uh, we, we did that for every one of the air handlers in both buildings, and then came up with the list that we're about to walk through. So one of the things here at Olivia, what's key is you have a lot of pneumatic controls, and controls are the things that turn off, operate, and, may, and um, allow um, kind of um, troubleshooting for your uh, HVAC systems. And you use like a compressor that kind of pipes throughout the whole building, turns stuff on and off. Well, new systems use electronics, right? Um, uh, pneumatics can freeze, it, needs, uh, it can have leaks, and um, it's really an antiquated tech system. It's tough to find people to work on it. It's really becoming a lost art, or is a lost art, actually. So upgrading that to DDC, building-wide, so stuff can be operated more efficiently, scheduled better, and troubleshooted from, frankly, your phone, as opposed to Denny having to come over and see if a boiler's operating or not. So upgrading that, install steam to hot water heat exchangers. And what that does is it utilizes your big steam mains, 
that then puts it through this heat exchanger, and then you pump hot water, which is what this portion of the building is heated with, and all new schools are heated with hot water as well. Steam isn't used anymore. Um, but it goes to your air handling units, and those air handling units, what's key is to keep them running so that you can heat the spaces as well as ventilate them, which code requires you to do. So get the air handlers off the steam and onto hot water with glycol, which is an antifreeze that goes through there so that you can continually operate without having these things freeze up on you continually. So that's how we approached it. And strategically locating these heat exchangers, you know, one in the pool area to take care of that portion of the building, one near the cafeteria for that portion of the building, and then one in the boiler room to take care of the, uh, the other classroom wing in the kind of the 72 area. So that's how we took a look at it, bringing steam, converting it to hot water, but then keeping steam for some of the smaller devices. You must just the fact that you keep that the, there's life now, unlike where I think there's life in the boilers. That's right. Um, the boilers would say steam. Um, they can be converted to hot water in the future, but we'd remove that big boiler right now that's currently sitting in there and operational, so you have a little more space to, to move around. Um, so replacing the air handlers again. Almost all of them do require replacement, um, and you'll see that basically from the uh, number OLMS3 all the way down to um, eight. And um, as, as Brent mentioned, we did separate the cost of cooling so that you could decide if you wanted to include that now or add it later. Regardless, um, we would design the new equipment to be able to accommodate cooling in the future extremely easily, right? Probably have it come with coils, then you just have to add the piping in the future. The other thing, uh, exhaust upgrades that are needed now, your dust collector is old and antiquated, it needs to be upgraded, especially with the renovations to tech have. Uh, welding hoods, same thing. Um, get get those. Um, instead of collecting the the uh, exhaust overhead, we uh, basically have utilized for about twenty years, and they work fantastic. These slotted hoods that take uh, the, from, what, take take the smoke away from the workpiece, exhaust it out, and they work they work fantastically. So get those to function a little better, and then also replace some general exhaust for some exhaust fans in the building that are old and uh, need require replacement. Place your pool boiler. And then we did put a number in there that if you decided uh, if then, uh, what it would cost to replace the 1922 area equipment, just as a marker of what uh, the deferred maintenance is there is from an HVAC perspective. Retro commissioning of the remaining equipment. <clears throat> what we want to do is not only make sure your infrastructure is going to last for the stuff, even the stuff we reuse, that it's, it's operational for, for many, many years to come, but it's also operating properly. So the stuff that would be replaced, law requires it to be commissioned, which means make sure it works per design. And works for how it's being currently being occupied. Let's make sure everything else that remains that's not being replaced is working per the original design as well. That's what retro commissioning involves. Um, and uh, power exhaust to your elementary gym. Well, what that means right now, it, it basically uses gravity. So as you bring in outdoor air, which you have to do, it just kind of holds the doors open. If you put an exhaust fan in there, that'll actually power exhaust it out, maintain pressure in your building, and not push hot air out into the corridor. Uh, and then also add glycol to your heating system. And then in this portion of the building, the new portion, which again is 24 years old, it has um, hot water heat, but it, they utilize duckboard. And they also did that in, this, in the 72 wing, this kind of uh, the 99 and the 72. And what duckboard is, instead of sheet metal duckboard, it's actually fiberglass board that they just kind of bend and tape together. And it, it frankly, it's, it's, it's literally taped together. And uh, Denny has to go through on many days when uh, you're not getting air areas and actually retape it. You know, the ductwork's physically falling apart. And it's basically the mains that are the biggest portion of the problem. The big one, big mains down the hallway, the smaller ducts that have less airflow, they aren't failing. But what we want to do is replace the mains with uh, with uh, with metal ductwork, insulated metal duct, and then reuse the uh, the runouts to your um, to the smaller to the smaller ductwork, which doesn't have as much air going through it. <clears throat> Let's see. We did put some options in for adding uh, cooling to the uh, the 1999 the area we're sitting in right now, uh, as well as we would re you have you're building a sprinkler, and if we go through and do these improvements, we'll have to um, basically modify the sprinkler system for either new configuration based on adequacy, or frankly, just even to do the renovation if ceilings come down. Um, code requires you to maintain some sort of protection on your uh, fire protection devices as the as the work is happening. Water heater replacement. Um, basically, um, that's, that's, that's exactly what it, what it shows. Uh, plumbing updates. Well, we were just talking as well that um, starting to have some problems with your water softener, the head of it, and that can, well, we can take a look at it. Is it something you just repair now? Or is it something that we take a look at replacing because it will be two years older by the time the work starts? So 
we'll take a look at that. And, and if it is required, we'll add another line item in there for that. Uh, plumbing upgrade. In your uh, art room, you have to have plaster traps, um, which basically when they use with clay, you have to have a big trap that catches it so it doesn't go into the city sewer. Add those and then replace your wash fountains, which are the big big items. A lot of times they used to operate by a foot pedal if it had water. Well, that doesn't meet ADA requirements anymore. So replace those for ADA um, compliant fixtures. And then one of the things that we originally um, had budgeted was uh, remove all your galvanized domestic water piping. Most of the new stuff, well, all of the new stuff is uh, is copper, right? In houses or houses sometimes use PEC, but commercial buildings, they'll use uh, copper. Well, here there's the galvanized. Well, even in the 1922 areas, it's still functioning and working well um, because uh, you do have a water softener and it does have 20 some years, 20 plus years left in it. Let's reuse it. We did cut it, cut it apart to make sure the condition was good. It looked good from all of our opinions. Um, so let's uh, utilize that piece of infrastructure for another 20 years. Uh, but we did have a budget for that originally. It's currently unchecked. And then the last item um, is mechanical, but it's more kitchen, is um, just having our, uh, our our kitchen expert go through there. And uh, we want to replace uh, your, your, you have a two-section convection oven, four burner range, your tilt skillet steamer, and then a hot water dispenser are the items that were identified for replacement. And then moving into the new kitchen, um, those um, you would get also obviously new, new kitchens, new kitchen equipment to fill that out. Any questions on, I know uh, the steam, the infrastructure is a big concern. It's something we definitely uh, spent a lot of time on and took a look at what's the most cost effective way to reuse what we could reuse, but definitely replace what needs to be replaced. And you definitely have stuff that needs to be replaced. Any questions on it before we move to electrical? You've done some homework. <laughs> yeah, crawled around a lot. So I did want to point out to um, on the replace area for the pool to clean the humidification. That's one of the ones that I toggled as one of the CFM. And the reason I did that is, is when Ellie showed what tested on the survey, that it tests well on a referendum. So we got to find another means to fix it. So that's one of the items I picked up on. And that's one of the that's one of the items that you do want to include cooling on, regardless if you do it the rest of the building because it's a pool area and you want to dehumidify and protect your envelope. Electrical? Are you okay? I have a question. Oh, okay. Say, say that we don't remove the galvanized piping, we leave it the way it is now. And we got to come back later in 20 years, but hopefully we'll, we'll still, still be here. But, anyways, right. to, to replace that, is that ripping the whole school apart again to replace that? Or is that how, what kind of a process is to. Um, so basically, your mains will run down the hallway, right? So they would be accessible. accessible okay. Yep, they would be able to be uh, accessed in the future. And then, as you replace fixtures in the future, you may want to replace it up to the main, put a okay. dielectric union. So you can do it on a fixture for fixture basis right now, and then replace the name, you know, when you need to, right? And then uh, replace the mains at a, you know, a couple decades down the road. Gotcha. Anything else? Electrical. Uh, is Ellie going to talk to you? Uh, I'm electrical. Electrical. Yeah. So I know uh, it's kind of a small screen. You can see, but you've got to get it on your, on your sheets there. So electrical, um, upgrading your, your lighting to, to uh, LED. Look at, uh, we actually had a lighting contractor come to her and do a room by room audit, um, uh, just so we had accurate, accurate budgets. And uh, the first option was just to go to the tenant to speak to us too, just that. Uh, the, take out your fluorescent lamps and put in the so it's like a round tube that's an LED, but you still use the ballast that's up there, the old fluorescent ballast. The next option is actually to retrofit the kitchens with an LED um, flat panel and you have LED drivers. You get rid of the old ballast, you have to fill them. So the price to, for the price difference between 303 and 368, I just thought from a maintenance room longevity, it made more sense to, to check that one in. Um, you'll save uh, energy savings, should be. Uh, around twenty-one thousand dollars a year just from that uh, improvement, and you're going to have maintenance savings because LEDs last a long, long, long time. So, an LED typically, just like your house, if you get an LED and it burn, if it doesn't burn out in the first month you have it, it lasts for a long time, <laughs> and that's that's under warranty. Um, the other lighting options, just get A, B, C, D. That was just adding more and more. It was replacing all your fixtures. It was adding lighting control systems as far as controlling the dimming and color, coloration of the lamps and all that. And that's just really, really isn't worth it. You can look at doing some of that special colorization and you can control the temperature of the light in your special ed rooms. 
we will do it in your special ed rooms, especially your sensory rooms. On the lighting though too, on, in this option, the one that's checked in, I mean like these would be the retrofit kit. You do have fixtures throughout that cannot be retrofitted at all and they would be getting new fixtures. I mean, it's kind of a mix of- See, There's a few places where you've got some of those surface mount um, eight crates looking fixtures. Yeah, they would be replaced. Yeah, the it's mainly like something like this can be retrofitted and put a, a kit in, yeah. And we do have money in there too. If you got some two by four choppers like this and we put the lenses yellowed, and now we do have door kits in here to make them look nice and yellow. All right, moving on. Electrical distribution upgrades. So our electrical engineers spent a lot of time on this. Um, it's really, you've got, uh, it's that old electrical vault, your electrical switch gears, and then your main electrical service needs to be um, replaced. Um, so we're gonna move that as part of the new addition. You've got to run new feeders from there and tie in. Um, basically, a new feeder from the electrical motor out to the distribution panels. Um, a lot of your existing uh, feeders are in metal rigid conduit. You no, know, uh, they use a conduit as a grounding. After 60 years, the conduit can um, corrode, depending on if it's buried, and you start having grounding problems. Um, right now, this is to put all new feeders, new panels, and new switch gear. When it comes to design phase, we might, I said, I emphasize might, we might be able to reuse some of the existing feeders if, they're, if they've got quite a bit of life left in them. So um, this is an example of something we've got it in there, we're kind of telling you worst case, but during design phases, we can not spend that money that's not spent. Um, moving on, emergency generator, we just placed it up. Um, you guys got, you've got the uh, reliability from the generator power standpoint. It's, yeah, you kind of cut some things, right? So that's currently not checked in. Um, meeting with Neil on a, on a lower, well, excuse me, sorry, fire alarm. Um, right now you have a simplex addressable system. Um, when we do this much work in this building, we go through state code review. State's going to make this upgrade to a voice evacuation system as part of the new code. They're going to make you jump up to new code. That, that panel does not um, allow for that. You have to replace the panel. The, the budget, again, we have the budget we got in here is to um, replace the panel your strobes, your horns, your duct detectors, all of that. We, when we bid it, we will bid it into simplex now. It's simplex devices in the room. Like over on the wall over there, for example, that little red strobe, that little red box. We will bid it such that um, you don't want to be in a situation where we're flat specking simplex because then they're just going to charge you a bulk of carbon late. We're going to make it that we can bring in other, fit, other manufacturers, but they have to replace the devices. And then Simplex, if you want them, Simplex can reuse the devices. So Simplex should be low on bid day, is the whole point, but we gotta make sure they don't play games. So we, our budget here, again, is to replace the, the, all the room devices. Hopefully we can, we'll do whatever most cost of All right, moving on to low voltage systems. Uh, met with Neil again on this. You know, we kind of got a plan. Um, phone system and black belt, he's come forward right now. Uh, PA system, he feels, now nah, we, we gotta upgrade that security. IT cave length, you know, IT was a big dollar ticket. If you remember, like on the, on the Spice Elementary Wing, the IT wiring is just down in the tunnels that are full of water sometimes. So, you know, these are these are bigger ticket items that he just can't afford to deal with in his tech budget. Um, things we have on X, he's comfortable with maintaining in his budget. And then he said, if you could throw a uh, 9.1 there, he said, if you could throw a little bit in there and help me with just a little bit of the classroom technology, I'd appreciate it. Um, but he's, uh, so that's what that's in there. Forty percent of the classrooms would get new, uh, new boards and um, sound amplification systems. Turn the page. New All right. So this first one. Um, Turn the page. Two options here. Right. Oh. Yeah. We got a note in there. The board did approve. I forget what the law was. You guys are spending like six hundred thousand to approve some of the some of the various roughs, like the elementary gym here in Islam, and then some work at Bird Island. So that's not in here. You, you guys have already approved that, funded it. It's not in here. Not duplicating effort there. You've got a couple other areas that are about a twenty-two-year-old EPDM roughs, and uh, option one B there would be to replace the roofs. 1A is what we had checked in there, and I want to explain what this is. It's, um, if, it's a company by the name of Fortis. If you go to the very last page of your bundle here, it should be a diagram. Right? Um, 
Basically, what they say is 80% of, of the commercial roofs in the country are replaced prematurely. Their, their argument is uh, roofing contractors use warranty expiration as a sales tool more than anything. They take the warranties up, they replace your roof, and they use it to drive revenue. And they, their basic claim is you can recondition an APM roof. You know, if it's shrinked in some areas, you got some tenting along your parapets. Um, some seals that need to be done. Go ahead and fix all that. There's still a ton of life left in that 60 mil uh, membrane. Um, unless you've got a known, known problem here and you've got to fix that, of course. But they're basically saying what, what compels the school districts to make change kind of improvements is more warranty stuff. And they'll say, you let us come into an assessment, we'll fix what needs on it, and we will we'll give you a new 10 or 12 year warranty. We'll, we'll take that risk. And there's, there's uh, they work, the Lloyds of London is actually there. Who's, or partner insurance company on all this. They come from the commercial sector. They work with like Colliers and Brookfield and all those big property management companies. And they're just now starting to get more into school districts. We've got two clients. We've got one down by the cross and one up by Green Bay who just, just approved this. Um, so it's, they're, they're, they're new to the K-12 market. They've been doing this for 20 years. So I just wanted to share you that in the, in the, in the blue sheet you have in front of you is kind of the process. If it's something tonight you say, yeah, we're interested in learning more, you know, um, we're basically at step two here. Um, they would come out step three and walk the areas of the buildings we're talking about and um, basically say, yeah, this is what it would take to refurbish and here's what our warranty price would be. So it's a it's a very good way to extend your roof life. So, and, and you're like, I don't want to take the risk. They're willing to take, they're willing to take the risk. And they, and they have local, you know, Minnesota con uh, contractors, partners. So if you have a roof leak, it's not like someone coming from Illinois, you got a Minnesota contractor coming to So again, if it's something you're interested, it's what I have next in right now, this is because getting the roofs. You've already approved the order to do things in the roof that are going to be So the remaining roof that 22 years old aren't getting in trouble. There's a lot of things but they're inherently problematic. So why not get more? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sorry to make you jump around, so we'll come back to the exterior for maintenance and issue. EDM 2 there is the full exterior facade. Um, as you know, that piece, uh, you basically, you don't have a vapor barrier in that auditorium, right? Um, and it's your exterior walls. You know, where, where it butts the rest of the buildings, you're not having trouble. It's the first. Um, Exterior wall. If you're having a lot of moisture problems, moisture gets in the wall cavity, gets moisture, flex, freezes, expands, that's popping, break, everything about it, like that. So we've, uh, we've had two consultants on here, uh, an envelope consultants. Basically, what we want to do is come in and, and rebuild the interior walls. Um, so we've got a vapor barrier in there, insulation, new um, new wall finish, new wall paint, and we just got no paint. Uh, we just got no paint. Yes. Yep, I know. And um, but you're painting you're, you're just you're painting the wall as is, right? Co correct. I mean, we we upgraded. We used uh, epoxy paint on, right. on the block as far as the paper barrier. So oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and that's one of the ones I've got checked in as a capital slash effort project. You can see there. Um, you, you could do that as a Philadelphia FM project. The different funding sources you could use for that if you want to do that now. Moving on, um, exterior facade. So, um, in our report, there's various exterior, there's various windows. Um, uh, oh, this is sealant. So, window and door expansion joint sealants. Um, whenever you have a, a, a penetration or a penetration into an exterior envelope, Got sealant around your windows to the to the to your brick, right? Same thing with your door frames. Anything exterior wise, well, all that sealant, just like your house, it becomes brittle over time and shrinks. So there's a lot of sealant should this should be redone. Um, later on, we we'll talk about actually replacing some windows and door. Um, there's some other joints, um, some other joint work that the masonry experts say that need to be done to help the longevity of your facade. Not a big dollar amount. Tuck pointing, 
you know, that's where the, the grout in a brick is um, uh, degraded to the point we need to grind it out and, re and replace the grout with replacing a small brick. Again, not a lot of it, but you want to stay up on it. And while we're at it, here, listen, this, this, let's get this building um, fixed so you, you don't have to spend so much money on it. Kind of working our way down there, you get to even four exterior windows. That's for the 1999 section. That's this section. Uh, replacing those. And then we've got uh, various exterior doors and hardware replacement around the building. We've got a floor plan that shows you what doors. But our we walked through it with the, uh, the architect, Jenny, and us, and we've gone through every single door. What needs to be replaced, what can be reused, and that's what that uh, dollar amount reflects. Hardscapes um, 5.1. That is um, really what just needs to be done. If you've got some sidewalks that are busted up, if you've got any curb that's busted up, you've got some stoops over here in the early um, childhood that they can't open their doors because it's the stoops have heaved. You know, they can't open the exterior door. Um, fixing, just fixing the things that need to be fixed. Um, not a big dollar amount, eighty-one thousand. You don't have that many huge uh, concrete needs in the district. Um, moving down, elementary playground. We've got two options there. We had just the drainage improvements you saw before, and then we've got one next in now, all funding as ESSER, because we came and met and talked to Jim and Danny on this. Is it's really to fix this drainage on, along this whole south side of this building, get it pipes to city water or to a uh, storm water. Um, it is to do, uh, create a new hard surface play area out here in basketball court for Kiss the Plan, and is to replace your um, wood chips and all that with poured rubber uh, fall protection. If you don't want your, you know, the poured rubber, if you, that's about a $300,000 line of that dollar out there. So it's a big chunk. So just to know. Um, all the other things we talked about storm water drainage way south, uh, way, you know, south, south end of this field. We, we don't have that checked in. Um, we heard loud and clear that the, the community wasn't smart as a big athletic upgrade. So any fencing layouts, we took that out. We took out any team rooms. Um, from a track reconstruction standpoint, remember we had those solar warnings done, and we've given you two options there. I think Teresa, this was uh, your idea. This was a good one. Was uh, uh, 7.2 A and B. Um, a is checked in. That would be to tear off your track and dig down and basically put four feet of sand in there because you have a high clay content here, kind of like they did the city streets here. And you know that that thing's never going to move. The other one here is to take it down and reuse your sub base. And the idea is if it, hey, it's, it's worked for 20, 30 years and it hasn't moved that much, you know, we'd strip the track off, fix any soft spots in the base, regrade it, repack it, compact it put down new asphalt and a new rubber surface. Um, and then that would be for obviously your track. And then you're jumping events, you know, jump, uh, high jump, all that um, That's another one I got checked in as bonded LTFM, because we heard a lot of clear that stadiums weren't. They didn't, well, we didn't want that part of the referendum, so let's use, uh, let's use bonded LTFM. Uh, next one was stadium lighting. Um, I do have that checked in. Uh, you do have a lot of troubles with I think Daniel was blesses himself every time he throws the switch, turn the lights on out there, and those, way those things hum. So basically, it's to go to new uh, LED fixtures, reuse your light poles out there, top them with new LED fixtures, but the real thing is new circuiting um, and new controls. Uh, there is a ground problem or a water problem somewhere. Um, it needs to be rewired, so to speak, and that's all included in that, that line item. Next one is scoreboard sound system. Currently not next in. Um, thought that was something you could, you know, boosters could find ways for over time and, and, and do it, you know, do the sound system one year, find ways to do a scoreboard a couple years later, work on getting advertisements to help fund it for local businesses, things of that nature. That's what a lot of districts do. All right, interior deferred maintenance. It is just what it sounds like. It's basically the interior finishes. And you remember in the report we had those little my 17s and showed the different colored areas we talked about um, bearing so where you got flooring or uh, high need flooring um like that <coughs> the medium flooring like stuff in 1999 you got life left in it let's use it so it's unchecked same thing with ceilings basically basically uh anything that's worn out outside this 1999 exception 
let's get let's get um, let's get it fixed and replaced. Um, same thing, wall finishes. And reading it doesn't help. Just move on to the report and looking at the, at the map and walking the building is the best way to get a handle on areas we're talking about here. Elementary gym, we had bleacher replacement in there, Jenny. What sort of troubles are you having with that area? I know that was. <coughs> Um, it, it, I was at least here, but is it, a, is, it a, is it a priority for you? I did, I, I'm asking that. Yeah, the, well, the bleachers in the MD pool were uh, in removed in there. Okay, they weren't they were built in there. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just kind of wondering. They looked like the ones that we had in the eighties. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, that was. Yeah, so but modified down because right. yeah. yep. no, 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 that makes sense. So we got replacement fence, replacing those lockers, full lockers, and then your high knee lockers. You know, I'll do an example. Uh high school wing east side was nice built in gray lockers, black those are great. Don't to touch those. The red ones have been removed in somewhere on the left side, they don't have a base and cut beat up. You know, let's get those replaced. So locker replacements, interior doors. Um, you know, as, as needed, uh, the real bad ones are that elementary wing over here on the west side. They, they need the whole door and everything in place. So that's factor, yeah. And then we talked in uh, a presentation earlier that the gymnasium upper level has a need seats replacing it. That's the check for right now. Yeah. All these things are used to check. Move around it. Now, lastly, for, for video, turn to page three. This is when we move into the NAP. Um, this is the, the building remodeling portions. So I do want to remind everybody if if we've got monies in there to remodel a space and the inadequacy, like like this area, turn it in, turn the old facts into middle school, high school, school spent, and we already had money in for maintenance to replace the doors here or the casework of flooring, we're not double counting. So like so that question gets asked all the time. So we're not double counting that. So we've factored that in. Um, so here you see the dollar months. The big, obviously, the big ticket is demoing the whole 1922 section and rebuilding this. Um, that's the big, the big ticket. This building, um, uh, 8.3 million. You've got the multi-purpose wrestling and this storage and, uh, and coach's office at 2.7 million. This visitor locker room. Right now, I have that as a question too. I know there's, I know that I talk AD. I know coaches will say that should be question one. I get it. Something's got to be question two. I think, and you, you can, you can, you get to pick which question two that means. So, right now, just for discussion purposes, I have that in as a question two. You can see there. Um, expand the public toilets. That's these ones here. I currently don't have X in because again, I'm trying to get. The tax impact down. So, quick question with that: mm -hmm. Is there a concern if we don't expand them that we don't technically have enough bathrooms for that area? No, uh, code-wise, you're you're good. We're still good. Okay. Yep. Yep. You know, functionality-wise. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I mean, it would be great if, if we get the south exit out of this gym and people can we get people to start using these? You know, I mean, it's not directly across, but can we can these be used for events too? I would say yes. So it's just too. a matter of retraining. So yeah. there's options. Retraining adults. Retraining adults is very hard. Yeah. Me. A million dollars to expand that. That's why it's not checked in. Yeah. <laughs> but yet. I know. It, I thought it was more of a want and a need. Mm -hmm. But you guys get to. You guys get to. Is there additional bathrooms on the concession or the commons area? That top right gray? Or is that. Uh, no, uh, I can match? no, just these ones here. Nothing. Okay. Nothing not there. here. Okay. Thanks. We can have like a walking path, like use these other bathrooms. You're saving us one point something million yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Incentive. Yeah. Well, it's creating this big group here. It's expensive for you. Yeah. And Russ can talk to you about that, about that all day long because we do them everywhere. They're mind-bogglingly expensive, it seems. But when you remodel your house, it's the same thing. You do a touch your bathroom. It's like, oh my god. Um, EDA five. So uh, remodeling the locker rooms. That's just. Uh, these two existing locker rooms, and you see how it broke down. New entry vestibule, high school office, fitness center. This whole area here is a line item. 
And there's still ability to enter from that area to the locker room. Yep. The this is, we'd have rubber flooring here. Okay. So if you have cleats, you come in, come in here, go right in. Okay. Question. Um, EA7, create the new district office. That's just really um, re some minor making this work for district office, elementary, and then creating this that old elementary library, creating a steam room. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math is kind of the acronym that's used in uh, academia. And um, it's really meant to be a shared lab. You know, right now you got art on the card for elementary. Well, if you want to do a bigger art project in a, a fourth grade district, they can sign, sign this up, use it. It's a, it's a lab to be used by your elementary when you, it's stuff that you don't, is not really work in their classroom, so to speak, the shared space. <clears throat> Repurpose facts, your old existing facts area here into middle school, high school sped. The two gentlemen that are located down here in 022 section, we move here, get closer to the, the students that they serve. Uh, revised system, bad entrance in the choir tier, we talked about that. Um, science, science rooms remodeling upstairs, this whole area. Revamping those new, new, uh, new sinks. New science case stops, new science casework, new science tables, um, gas where you need gas, um, all the plumbing, if you see, all that up there. Um, tech Ed, just to, remind to, to do the reconfiguration here is to create this lab, to get the robots to open this, open this up, get, get windows in here, um, get overhead door in here. Things of that nature. Basically, this this entire wing. Um, what you need to do to refresh that. Good news is not working with your staff, meeting with your staff there. They were very reasonable. They don't. It's not a big tent. compared to everything else. It's a very small line item. I think you're getting good bang for the buck there, so to speak. Well, high school. Oh, this is the next one. Uh, high school toilets with exterior access. Middle school classrooms. High school breakout and early childhood storage. So that's really creating these restrooms. Um, reconfiguring this to get two rest classrooms in there and a hallway connecting to the high school that direction. Um, and then this is a, I apologize, I realized when we brought this, we got the wrong printout here. I left this as is. I, we put the breakout space here. I know it, it works better on a corner because you can open up these walls. Um, so we got a breakout for middle school, a breakout for high school, a breakout for elementary. So this should be green. I apologize. Get that fixed. When you're saying you're moving that down there, does that mean reconfiguring a classroom? This one here. If you say you yep. move yes. that down. Yeah, reconfiguring. Yep. So uh, think of really opening up these walls or make a class. And it's meant to be a sense of breakout space so students can work on projects, small group instruction. Think if, um, glass and closed conference rooms or small groups can get together, but you still have visual supervision, um, soft seating group areas for students going to work on uh, it's their own uh, lesson plan. You have a place to do that. Um, when we met with the staff, most new, all new schools incorporate these now, and we we originally didn't have this in before plan. And when we met with your teaching staff, it was very much desired, and they uh, put their foot down, so to speak. So, but again, it's the board's choice. Um, elementary just to move on that speech storage special ed. So that's really um, reconfiguring this. All this storage down here, storage here, speech here, and, and um, kind of take care of everything on that wing, just from a reconfiguration standpoint. The deferred maintenance on this wing, as far as ventilation, technology wiring, doors, paint, flooring, that's all in the deferred maintenance. Uh, boom, boom. Expand East parking lot. That's, uh, um, I don't have that checked in. Why well, have it in as an old funding? Again, you don't have to do it now. And if you move in and you're like, really, we really need more parking. Um, we really want, so if you remember the last time we heard, it would have a uh, move the monument sign over here, get the flagpole over here, have this to be your front door. You got one way in right now, we'd have a, we'd cut it, we'd have another uh, road access on the side so you could have a true uh, drop off loop in and out. And that's only if you add the additional 55 spots or. Yeah, because you got to kick, yes, you got to. Okay, we don't yes. have enough to do an Right. Enter and exit. Yeah, Correct. exactly. Yeah. I could challenge engineers to look at that, but it was really good. Except you don't want to break next to each other. So no. it, was, it was 
moving more grass called south and giving another exit out uh, to that road. Or even could widening. Just a, could it just be a road going through that area without all the additional mm -hmm. parking oh, spots? Yeah. For sure. They, they so yeah. That For sure. I mean, you're, yeah. So, so you're going to the practice field then? Well, that's exactly. That's the problem. Yeah, it does It does impact a portion of that. That would impact discus and uh, shot put for track and field, I believe. Mean, yeah. uh, discus. Not shot put. Just discus. Just discus. Yeah, we have to yeah. find a new location for discus. Or could we widen? Yeah, it's that. It just it's it can't throw it over the middle. No, <laughs> let me challenge the civil engineers. Could you not just put a how could we road give another right behind the building that's there? Fix the flow without adding the parking. Especially when we're going to focus on that yeah. one and only entrance. Right, but yeah, that's, I know, that's why I like to figure out the building is, is you know, you is that what we're this, can't we just, here's beginning? the building, the prod, <laughs> just go right beside <laughs> behind it, and, we'll, and then yeah. I got to uh, relocate the maintenance building, and this no is your new front door, and all this, but I don't want the maintenance building right there, so it's moving it down here and getting it out of the way, removing the existing building that you built, and pour a new pad and, and run new water to it, power, but um, actually, so, you know, we actually mm -hmm. have about a mover in to look at it. If he said, not a problem, I can pick that up really easy. So um, we'll relocate that. And then the last one is not X. People were asked, can you, what would it take to put a lot of turf in here? So I gave you the price for that. But it's not checked there. But we did have, uh, as I told you before, um, some government's up school district last year put two of those in. And uh, they love them. So but you want access out into there from the classroom, wouldn't you? Yeah, we'd have to, we, well, not from each classroom, but we'd have to do some sort of access point here. Um, okay. The challenge is getting an, an egress out because if there's a fire, right. it's that's the challenge with it. And then it, then it was, well, it's not that usable. It's so narrow, but then it's hard to maintain. When you put turf in there, you don't really have to maintain it. So again, you, you got the number. You can, I didn't check it for a reason. That's that's right. the current project mix for Olivia. Again, you guys are going to go on the red line. Heck, on this, I know. Um, but that's what it's been. Um, jump. Are any questions, on Olivia? Before I jump to Brianna, I have one quick question in that spot you were just talking about. Um, yes. Right there. If one wanted to use that. And make it usable space for like some egg thing and or um, greenhouse. Could you do like the, they have those greenhouse clear glass vent things where the students can use that and grow things out in that area? You could. It. it um, you remember it's pretty shaded down in there. That's the it's shaded. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not as wide as you. Very narrow in there. It doesn't um, get the full. I mean, put it this way: when your when your sun's down here. You know, when the sun's you know, lower in the sky, you're, 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 when the sun comes from the east, you know, you're, you're shaded, and then it comes due south of you, this would be well lit. But you know, you're not going to get shade here, for example. You're not going to get sun, sunlight there, but you'd get sun, good sunlight there. Um, you could put a smaller greenhouse in there if you wanted, but it's it was it's it's meant for day, when, daylight for the classrooms is what it's meant for. Um, How I mean, I mean like it, in that it, bottom... I'm just thinking out loud here, that bottom classroom where you're going to have like the breakout, you said you moved it down in there. If there was a door... You could have an, you could have an egress there, yeah. Then someone, they could use that bottom half too for whatever. Yeah, and and when we design this remodeling and this, we can certainly put a door in. We got to have two exits and we can certainly do that, yeah. But then, it, but then it really comes down to what you want to have in there. Right, but I think it'd be a good idea to have it anyway just if someone were to venture out in there and there was a fire, there's two escapes. Yep. Yep. Keep, 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 keep in mind. At least if you keep, have the doors, it opens up. Keep in mind. The, um, it's the fire code looks at it as an interior room when you occupy it. So this has happened in our districts. But some student jumps on the roof. It's a Christmas or it's a roof. So I'm saying these doors have to have crash bars, mm -hmm. emergency crash bars, in to the building. So you, you'd have to have a you'd have to have a motion detector here and here tied to a, a 
bird uh, alarm right. to monitor it. But it, it has caused problems in other districts mm -hmm. from a vandalism. Just, can't, just eyes wide open. The other thing is it's hard to get them to down things to do watertight because think of all exterior doors. Which way do they open? The thresholds are sloped such so you open the door next year and it also has water drain out. This threshold is all these to crash in, the thresholds have to slope in. We've had troubles with water intrusion too. So it's it's doable. And I'm all, I'm all for, during the design phase, our budgets are covered. Jason, if we want to add a door here and door here, we can certainly do that. Just want to let you know the pros and cons. All right, Bird Island. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, um, the domestic water at Bird Island was just um, The assumption was made that we'd just be using the west side again, not the east side. So that's the part that we looked at. Um, the condensate piping uh, scene was in really rough shape there, um, you know, as well as the boiler room itself. We had to kind of semi patch the boiler for last winter. Um, the, the actual sanitary piping, it's very, very near the I you know the, the 1917 portion of the building that comes through there. Um, it, we were uh, ankle deep in water when we cut the steam. It, it just would not drain out of that boiler room. We actually had to pump it with a little pump over to another drain. So the, the actual sanitary sewer is in really, really rough shape in that boiler room. So we took a look at how do we heat the building um, without using a steam boiler, without even using a hot water boiler, and not using a boiler room at all. Um, and uh, we came up with, as we were talking about it, the spaces are pretty straightforward and they don't have a huge occupant load other than the two gymnasiums. Um, so utilizing like a natural gas furnace and uh, for each of the areas and distributing throughout will provide you um, not only heating, but also uh, cooling throughout the facility because rooftop units come with inherent cooling. Um, you can get them without them, but you don't save a whole lot of money actually. They just tell you to turn the switch off. But um, the gymnasium here, you know, you currently have an air handler here that needs to be replaced. It's currently heated by steam. You know, set something on the roof there and connect to the existing ductwork. Your existing auxiliary gym has no ventilation at all. It doesn't mean code. It frankly shouldn't shouldn't be utilized from a code perspective. Adding a rooftop there, again, and providing some duct distribution there to breathe new life into that space. And then um, distribute some rooftop units through the locker rooms. These two community rooms just put a couple of furnaces in there um, for the short term while you decide what the long term use is going to be provide economizer so you can provide outdoor air cooling when possible, as well as uh, natural gas heat. And you currently have two rooftop units in the community area that we reuse. Um, they currently have steam coils in them, but we would put electric coils in them in the short term so that you could just uh, heat that space uh, while you uh, figure out the long-term use again. So uh, again, upgrade the controls from pneumatic to DPC so that it can be uh, operated efficiently, scheduled efficiently, and troubleshot from a, from a phone versus having to go over there. In the basement, it's a little tricky. There's um you have a you have a sewage ejector in there, right? That uh, and, and that has to uh, a lift station that uh, has pumps in there that pump the sewage out. Those should be replaced uh, so that you can continue to utilize that side. And along this edge there, there's kind of a continual issue of moisture seepage down there. Now you did add some sealant around here a couple of years ago, and it, and it definitely helped. But you can even see as you walk around that sealant is starting to let go a little bit. So we have to come up with another um, another way to do that. Um, we have a, an allowance plugged in for that. We have some ideas, but we have to do a little bit of destructive testing to check some stuff out. And um, we definitely want to reseal that with something a little less, um, uh, that doesn't contract as much. Then also we might want to dig some, uh, or basically drill some holes into the bottom of that block, gather that water, and actually trench it and drain it into a, a, a some sort of sump pump as well that would pump it out. So it may not 100% solve it, but we want to get it as close, as basically as, as moisture-free as possible. Uh, let's see, uh, get the domestic water heater. We have to um, relocate, um, you know, all the domestic water comes from your boiler as well. So we would just probably back in this receiving storage area, we'd locate a natural gas water heater. We bring a new water service in here that would connect not only to your um, domestic water, connect back into the distribution, but also provide a, a new uh, sprinkler riser for your sprinkler system there. So it would have to remain sprinkler connect into your mains of your sprinkler system and reutilize all the piping that we possibly can there. Galvanized piping again, we did not um, we did not check that in. It's a substantial amount of dollars as you can see and uh, the system or the, the distribution system there does have plenty of life left in it. So that in a nutshell is the way we approached Bird Island to 
cost effectively to heat it, ventilate it per code, and then also um, inherently it'll get cooling in all the spaces as well. So it's kind of a nice side benefit. Question, how hard would it be to convert it to hot water heat if you took the boiler out? Well, you, it would. It, it can be done, right? So you would have to put a boiler in and you'd have to put a distribution system in and it, it's, it's substantially more expensive versus the gas piping. And here you had so many single zone areas, like you have the gym, you have the gym, you have two locker rooms, you know, two furnaces. You already have those two units there, then it just takes another unit there. As we looked at it, and as me and Denny kind of talked different strategies, um, it, it, uh, it, it's the most co cost effective way to do it. Um, the boilers, you know, you, you'd come here, you'd have to put a whole new heating distribution system in, and then the, the, the air handling, the air distribution equipment is uh, inherently more expensive as well, you know, because it's different. It's more modular. It isn't something you can just pick up off the shelf in the furnace. And the rooftop units, a lot of those are pretty factory standard, where the uh, air handling units are a lot, are a lot more custom. But it is, it is the piping is a big expense, right? The piping is a big expense. Is, is there anything that has to be done to the roof system to handle a roof? Yes. Um, yes, the, yes, it does. Uh, structurally, uh, as you know, about probably 15 years ago when all the car dealerships, uh, they started to have roof collapses. The structural codes just immensely got more stringent. So, yeah, we do have budget in there for uh, typically you have to reinforce the joists below. You just can distribute the, the rooftop weight across more joists. Right. Yeah, so it can be done. Do you want to speak to me? You know they had that problem. Issue here, like a thing. Kind of oh, that uh, for, for both sides. Yeah, so so for the floor mounted urinals, um, it's inherent that over time it, they rot out underneath, right? Because they're they're always wet. And a lot of times, basically, when they clean, uh, when maintenance cleans, they'll just kind of shove all the water into and almost they use them as a floor drain, right? So you've had to replace those at the tune of I don't know what, almost forty thousand dollars, right? Recently, um, there is we we did a walkthrough. Of all of the areas, and I don't believe there was any. In other, I think that those were the only two that you had, right, in the, within the spaces. So the rest of them were all wall mounted. So we did take a look at that as well. Uh, all new ones that we've uh, we, we never put in the floor mounted just for that reason. They're always wall mounted, easier to clean underneath them and out of the way. Mm -hmm. Any right. questions on that? Any other questions on it? Would would it make sense to just eliminate that locker room under the stage? If I wouldn't eliminate it. I'd probably want to occupy it. I would use it for basic storage. Yeah, I wouldn't use it for a locker room anymore. No. Okay. It's no the, the whole idea is to get new locker rooms up here and, and abandon it as is. But we, even if you abandon it, we want to fix the water. You don't want just to. Right. We're going to improve the water just from the integrity of the building, yeah. the foundation integrity. So you don't continue to have secondary damage. And we'd also want, we'd still have to replace that sewage ejector, right, for all the drains that are down there. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so we, we don't have, we don't have any way to refurbish that locker room at all. Nothing at all. It's just storage. That's what's yep. assumed now. Yep. That's why I don't even show, I don't even show a side picture of it. I right. took it out of, took it out of place. So. <clears throat> um, electrically, um, minimal work there. Um, uh, we would have, uh, we have factored in a new electrical service um, in that uh, where we um, in the building. The nice thing if the building's down to this size, we don't have to go switch gear. We go a twelve hundred amp panel. We can we can save money on the electrical side. But we do realize that the electrical service is in the nineteen seventeen section back here. So that if you demo, that would um, that we've got that covered. Um, just got lighting. Go to LED lighting, um, and you can do go as far as you want. I I, I got to double check because I know you just did the gym this gym. Did you do this, Jim? I didn't think so. Okay. I got to double check to make sure that we don't have that. I, I'm almost sure they came and audited after you retrofit. I just want to double check that we don't have costs in there for that. And then it's basically LED for all this. And you can do as much of this LED or as little as you want. But this is for what you see. And then, um, oh, this then is electrical distribution upgrade. I talked about a new electrical service entrance to the building. That's, that's uh, ES2. Next year, roofing, I did the same thing, that Fortis. Um, basically, um, you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, you guys just approved doing this gym and, I, and repairs to that sliver, um, that little sliver here. And then what we're really talking about is doing the Fortis warranty on this gym here, which you haven't had troubles with. So. 
turn into page five, interior, main, the main gym floor and bleacher replacement. A new floor in here and bleachers. Got your lights in there. Um, that would be a nice competition gym for you to use. Um, and then last, that adequacy. New stage, new stage curtains. As I, this is all things I, I told you before. It just kind of shows you the cost for each stage curtain, stage curtains, theatrical lighting, and, and refurbish, refinish the stage floor. Creates two new locker rooms. Restroom, I gave you two options. Replace, remodel, and refresh them, you know, update them as they are configured. And then another add alternate to um, basically reference double the size of them. Okay. Okay, that's a question. You can see I got those as a question too. Making the restrooms bigger, and then then it goes down to um, how to handle the east side. In that, uh, do you put it as a question to? I got as a question two to demo that. Um, put two, you know, create new interior vestibules, and then the second one there is to put a uh, new sidewalk along the front, along the east side, and a new gravel parking lot in here. Um, so you have parking for your events. But I got it as a question too. You could eliminate that. You could you could um, mothball that side, waiting to see the results Everything of up. the um, <laughs> state uh, the grant requests to the Diamond Hub. You, know, you can take a wait to see approach on that. Um, that's kind of show you the cost. Show you the cost to do those different things, and you decide what you'd like to do. And the uh, last one was not XCN right now. It was the playgrounds for Bird Island and Lake Lillian allowance. Um, I just I was just trying to cut things to get number down smaller, but you can certainly add them back in. So with that, um, why don't you jump to as far as the, the financial solution a little bit, just kind of show you what does this cost? And this is this is just one way to fund it because there's a lot of the alternatives here. And there is um paper chili. Your financial advisor would be involved in the final solution. Um, and we, in the subsequent meetings, we can talk about term of the bond. Right now, it's 230 years term. If you want to go 20, 25 years, what it costs, you know, obviously, short term the tax impact goes up. Um, what interest rate you want to convey to the public? You want to convey current rates with a big asterisk. This is based on current rates. Rates go up, back go down, you know, more control rates. Um, those are things we can tackle down the road. Do you want to show us up? To, yep. We're going to just show you the, the tools so that you'll, I think, give you an appreciation for um, how sophisticated it is. Um, we don't expect you to fully understand it. Um, this is what it looks like on 11 by 17. So you can see a, a lot going on. And what, what that means is uh, we're trying to give you an idea that um, Minnesota school finance uh, is very complex. Uh, but it gives us a lot of options, a lot of different levers to pull. Okay, we, uh, as, as Brett said, we, we've got uh, different financing instruments used, um, different programs. We can can vary the term; could be five, ten, fifteen, twenty, up to thirty years. Um, and so, what we're talking about is, a, as we start to zero in on the scope, we can then can start looking at the uh, how we actually finance it, and can we make the program more affordable? Okay. Uh, can we, you know, obviously the uh, the less expensive we it, it 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 matters what it costs to taxpayers, but what's more important is what it costs the taxpayer. Okay, and the target that we're shooting for, based on the survey data right now, is fifteen bucks a month. The way we have the plan currently laid out, and again, this is a first draft. Think of it as everything's in pencil. This is just our first cut at it. You know, now we, as Brent emphasized, you've got many, many opportunities, X, on X, cost, discuss, all that sort of thing. Um, but the, the initial cut at the plan, um, our referendum amount uh, would be $19 a month for question one. They can't see that. Anymore, but a yeah, buck, a buck 60 for question two. And then the uh, levy authority items, which you could do now, you know, not now, a year from now, five years from now. Uh, would be a total of uh, called another two bucks, a little under that. So what I'm talking about is all right here. So question one, 19 bucks, and that referendum amount, I'm sorry, 
would be uh, $38,500,000. I feel like I'm like doing a demo here. <laughs> um, question two, again, the way we currently describe the plan to you today, referendum amount, $3.2 million, tax impact, $1.60. Um, then the uh, additional IAQ indoor quality LTFM loan terms. So right now that's cooling. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. That's 59 cents. Keep in mind, we've got about a million dollars. I think it's 979000 You probably have $10 million that would qualify. We currently have the majority of that in the referendum. There's plenty of districts that would, would split that out. That's something that, that you can talk about. Um, and then the uh, the abate tax impact of the abatement tax levy, that's parking lots. I know it's got kind of a strange name, but it's it's basically parking lots, hard surfaces. That's dollar sixteen and the total dollar amount on that I guess I don't know, I'm sorry. is uh, about one point six million. So again, you can you can do these now years down the road. You can wait through that later, you can wait through that later. Um, I'm trying to give you some flexibility there. Some of the things, and again, you'll get a copy of this cash flow, but we didn't want to inundate you with all of this because right now we don't control the scope of the work. Yeah. Um, uh, and, but we can, right now it's 30 year term at current rate, 4.15. We can look at what 25 is. You can say, what if we, um, what if we release, you know, we shake a little and tell the, tell the community of the world's, you know, use it for interest rate at five so we know we're below it. Well, that would probably add two dollars a month, right? It's, it's you know, so those are things we can do. We can play with terms. We can play with um, uh, your tax growth. Right now, this is basically amortizing the repayment, so it's flat line. Um, you want to talk about tax? Yeah. So, the growth. Yeah. So um, the way we have it structured now is kind of the most conservative approach. So basically, we're assuming zero growth in tax valuation of the community. Okay. Well, certainly, you know, you're. you're uh, property values are skyrocketing now, right? Just in general, um, you're, 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 no, no, even in normal times, you're, you're going to experience growth there. There's a uh, common thought that says, you know, of, of course people don't want their taxes going up. I get it. I don't want mine going up, right? But if you think about it, if, if you ask the, the rational person, should you tax the raw dollars be the same amount that you know that they are today, ten years from now? Most people would say, well, no. You know, right? A gallon of milk is going to cost more ten years from now than it does today, right? or if we have people moving to the community, they should pay their fair share. So there is another strategy where let's just say that we planned 1% growth and then we um, rear loaded our payments at that same rate. So the tax rate would stay the same, okay, at uh, 1%. We would then lower our upfront tax payment, thereby kind of matching that as, you know, uh, as inflation grows, our payments are, are going to kind of grow with it. One percent is supposed to if inflation. Normal times is two to three percent. Right now, obviously, a lot higher than that. But that would be a way to make the program more affordable today, and keeping it affordable over the long haul. So, so does, does that make sense? So on, on, this, on the referendum, well, question one is nineteen dollars a month, and you can see we're just you know, same payment year on year. If you grew the payment one percent a year. That 19 goes to $16 and 80 some cents. It does have a pretty good big impact, but it, it just, again, these are just some of the things that we'll, we'll discuss down the road. Just trying to get you, just trying to introduce it to you, the concepts that you can start thinking about what you like to do. Um, maybe stepping back to some of the other, this is all linked to, it's all linked to the sheet. So as you check things in, in or out, and as you change the funding source, it goes over here. Um, right now, bonded LTFM. As I said, you get $245,000 a year. We're basically saying on this scenario, first of all, we got to find out if you're going to have any LTFM carry over at the end of the fiscal. Because you've got, if you got LTFM left over at the end of the fiscal, you could use that as a buy down, right? And that means you borrow less. And then you could basically say, other oh, 245 for the first three years, let's put 75% towards the bond, leaving 61 for Danny and other things. And then the next three years, you put 60% and leaving 100,000 for Danny. And then the next few years, you leave, you put you know, half of it towards this, and leave half for Danny. So that's what I meant by using a portion of the LPFM, but reducing your dependency on that over time because you're going to need it over time. You know that. Um, this money. So the big thing there is probably what, what are we going to have for LPFM carry over anything that 
will um, that will help you know. No, if we can just take it, we go minus two hundred. Just say you had that at the end of the year. You're not going to have that, but say minus one hundred, right? And then I go down and, and you know we can, I think we solve it, and you know we went from seventy five percent down to seventy percent. You know, just we can do the same thing by changing the term for all these other things. So Mike mentioned um, IAQ project finance it over twenty years. It would. Um, you know, that's a tax impact of what we say 57 cents whenever you want to do it down the road or you can choose to do it now ahead of time either too. tax abatement same thing over here capital projects i got 1.2 million checked in as capital um between esther and fund balance i just i just pulled this off the air maybe have a million dollars to put towards it if you're only finance financing 226 then i'd finance over five years and you a 48 grand for five years. You know, if we can change the term to 10 years, we can change the buy down to 500 grand. We can take all this and put it in the referendum. That's, these are just, as Mike mentioned, the levers we can pull. And then the other option is, is like I said, we can show you like we go 1% tax growth. Um, and I recalculate, bear with me. <coughs> and $19 a month. Are you emailing us the spreadsheet so we can all miss it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite that be us. <laughs> So that's it. It could go from $19 to $16.89. But we, we, we weren't able to do that, but we would be more than happy to come back and play what if games and kind of try this, try that. And literally, you know, as, as you're changing funding sources, you literally could tell us, you know, give us this line item, but uh, these were all drop downs. We could change that line yeah. up instantaneously, this sheet will, will update and we can show you the impact okay. in seconds. So we just want to introduce you to this tool. So, the whole, you know, part of what we talked about and like it or not, you know, we, Brent had mentioned that, you know, we came up with this idea of a unity plan. One of the things that we, we've gotten to know the community and, you know, there's all sorts of, of different opinions and feelings and everybody means well. But so we're trying to come up with how do we unify the community also bringing in people that maybe you know don't have children in, in the school district, just the taxpayers in, in, in general. So th this is part of that about how do we come up with a plan that uh, you know gets as much done as we can, unifies the community, and it's also affordable that we can build consensus around. That was the idea of, of, of that. And um, so what we what we as a group here need to do, it's uh, May 3rd, actually feels like May 3rd today. Um, what we need to do, and you, um, we will move as fast as you're ready to, but in terms of timeline, okay, just in terms of a kind of beginning with the end in mind, if you want to have a chance to be ready for a November referendum, which November when it's May 3rd, it sounds like it's a long ways away, but our industry it's not. We essentially have got the next month to work together to dial in a plan that then what we would envision, and it's up to the to the board and the district to decide this, but we'd envision this group then presenting that plan to the board saying, this is what we would like you to consider. Then the district would go out and what we'd suggest is we do this survey on that plan to find out, is there, can we get consensus on that plan? That survey would take about a month to do. So that, that would happen during the month of June. Okay, got to factor in 4th of July and stuff. You know, um, the results get back to the board, uh, called by the middle of July, and the uh, the board has basically from the middle of July to at the latest, the uh, August thirteenth, middle of August to approve it. And on August thirteenth would be the drop dead date. In essence, it's right around there for a November referendum. But we've got other steps. We've got to review and comment to go through. The Department of Education has to, has the to, to you know analyze the program and, and uh, approve it, uh, those sorts of things. But so um, our task is to see if, if we can come to consensus with our, our team here, um, call it by the end of, of May around the plan that we- That's board meeting the 22nd, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah. Oh, that yeah. Excuse that, that, I, yeah. So, yeah. Should, Ellie's got a handle on this, I think. <laughs> I said, the end of June, I guess, ideally, I guess, just before Memorial Day weekend, I think that would be. Um, if we can do that, 
if we need to call a special board meeting, again, we want you to move, um, be mindful of the schedule. It's part of our job it is, it, it is to, to help you reach your goals, um, but you move at the speed that you're comfortable. You move forward when you're ready to. And the brush, brush pipe survey is another point, right? This is the, it's, can, we, can, we, can we agree with something to a plan, so singular, so we can, do, we can help educate the public on what they're answering on the survey? Uh, as far as what the project entails, and when you get that back, you still have time to refine the plan again. Yeah, so if, if it's it can, fine, fine. right, right, it, it, it might come back and, and tell us that we're you know, we get 90% of it right, okay. And but compared to the survey, the, the previous one we did on that survey, we, we tested what is the public value, okay, uh, what sorts of things are important to them, uh, within that, in terms of educating them on. on the general types of needs what's what's the general tax tolerance this would be literally saying this is what we're thinking about doing okay and uh here's what it would do here's why uh, basically can you support it um and it would say here, here's what it would cost and then but based on that we you know again it is a snapshot in time but you have a pretty good idea of are we on the mark or not but you don't want to do that until we all feel like Yep, if the public supports it, we're, you know, we're getting behind it. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. there, then I'm going to speak out about this because yeah. as a representative that was hired or elected to be on the school board, representing all three communities, the people that have visited with me on several occasions, um, not just in the last almost three years that I've been on the board, but prior to that during the other referendum, we owe it to the communities to and I've mentioned it several times, but it never seems to get addressed. To bring up a plan that has at least K through four back in Bird Island, using as much as that building, except for the three-story building, as much as possible without having to do any more adding on. And I'm gonna reiterate what Pat Bumgartner said at the last facility committee, he's not here. But he said too, as far as the, the buildings, to to look at them without adding or like, I love a lot of the plan that you show today. Okay. However, we're not addressing the part where the communities feel where there's the wedge. And there's a lot of people that want their elementary school back because of whatever discourse went on through maintenance, whatever. We're not pointing fingers at anyone. I'm just saying there's been a lot of animosity i feel we owe it to them to show a plan with k through four with just the basics and then renovating this over here too to fit six through twelve with as much stuff as like what you show but maybe we can back off in certain areas without building so much new and then see how that pans out then show them both plans do your your um what do you call that wild brush fire thing then yeah. can i I understand your point completely. And I think if we were in a financial position that we just saw that if we have to rate, if we have two facilities, our tax basis goes up already beyond what the community is willing to pay. So I don't, I have a hard time processing that because how do we, how do we look at that when we already know right off the top that we have to go out and ask for money just to operate. We haven't even fixed our facilities. So I struggle just well by closing our building over there. I'd like to see where we save the five hundred thousand dollars if it's going to cost five hundred thousand to open it back up and run it. Where's the five hundred thousand savings from closing it and bringing everybody here? And the fact is, is the five hundred thousand dollars and the whole scheme of millions, if it gets people to come together and build that bold warrior camaraderie again and gets people back on board, isn't that our main goal? I wouldn't disagree with that. I just go back to the dollar. Unfortunately, we can't move any direction without figuring the amount. Well, let's figure and we've it heard, in. but we already heard, we heard from our community. They only want to do $15. But let's make up. And I think we've done those plans. plans. We've already mm -hmm. gone through those plans. That's not going to pan out. I think those, those plans had a lot of fluff in them. The first time around. I'm sure they did. They had a ton of fluff in them. But we can't spend 20 some million dollars over there and think we're going to get something done over here. It ain't going to happen. Well, then let's see what that looks like. 
We, we've already if, done if, that. It would be at least 10, if, um, to, to invest in both, it would be at least 10 million more than what we're trying to make. The only thing is that before you had it where we were going to build a new lunchroom area, a, right. a new, we don't have to do that. We have the lunchroom area right. there. But even if we did that, you still have to rebuild that three-story section and um, and renovate what you have there, classroom-wise. And that would be, I, you brought that up last time, she said, I, and you're right, you, you don't have to replace the cafeteria. Um, but even then, it would be, it, 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 the, the combination of two projects would be 10 million more that are showing out. And we're already at 19, we're trying to get to 15. It's just gonna add, it's just gonna exacerbate the problem costways. Now you can say, we don't have to do the work. Well, we don't have to do the, if you don't wanna do the, if you don't wanna fix the spaces, yeah, we, can, we could spend less. And, but I think the question you gotta ask yourselves is, does this keep a footprint in Bird Island? Does it show reinvestment, long-term reinvestment? You still have events over there and it allows you to um, make a more impactful uh, uh, remodeling and, and, and re rejuvenation in one building versus halfway in two schools. That's kind of the way I put that. But again, it's your guys. Yeah. It's, your guys. It, it, it's, it's, it's ultimately- for the communities that they want their school back. I, I totally hear, and, and keep in mind, we, we, we don't have a horse in the race. I mean, we're, we're Switzerland on this one. What, and, and we, we can put it together, we, 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 we assure you it's based on the tax tolerance. It, it, it's not going to fit. A couple of data points is one, I fully respect what you're saying. And we've been in many communities where they close a school and, and it's always painful. Um, the survey data the, the didn't show um, consensus on turning it in, into a school. So we, we, we just followed purely on the data and try, try to put a plan together that way. And second is, you kind of asked Russ a question of this, of the infrastructure that we've designed for that space um, was not designed for it to be used as a school. The big difference being when you have a, schools have got very high density from a, a people perspective because you've got 25 kids or 20 kids in, in a 900 square foot classroom. And that would add significantly to what you would need to do there. Again, we'll do it, but it's it, it would add- We already have a 900 square foot classroom. No, no, I'm, but I'm saying, what I'm saying is when you, if it were to be used as a school, the amount of work that it would take infrastructure wise uh, HVAC wise is substantially more than what's planned now in order to meet the occupancy uh, requirements of a school. I would also not dismiss the, the survey data where it came back and said there's acknowledgement to get something to pass that the investment for honestly. The general public is that there's nothing designed that, that 51 percent of them improved. So and the data that we got from the survey showing is the uh, especially when I say it costs more money. Um, that's where and then, and then when we asked your staff, not a single respondent your staff thought you should be open at the school too. And I'm sorry, staff can make it right here in front of them. That, that's <laughs> part of you know, what Brent said right there. I was, I was gonna mention when Elliot was going through it, part of the importance of talking to staff is number one, especially in this day and age where we're, uh, it's, you know, we're, from a labor perspective, things are very competitive. We want to be able to maintain staff. We want them, we, we want them to be in an environment that's conducive to teaching and learning, but it's also and very important that they support the plan because it's most likely that they will be some of the most listened to people in the community. So if they're saying we shouldn't be doing this, those are silent killers of referenda. Well, if it's gonna be a nice remodeled school, I can't help but think the teachers would like it, especially if it's a K through four. And when I looked at that survey, it says overall support for something in Rhode Island was 65%. Yeah. Yes, it's broke down into different categories, right. but it's 65% of people that yeah. want that. Want yeah. something. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what but they're doing, right? Yeah. But yeah. that doesn't mean that they don't want the K through four there. So that's my whole point. And only 8% said none. Right. But if we do, the, if, if we hypothetically took what you showed us today and ever, you know, agreed to go to the Black Fire survey, we're going back to the entire community to hear their voice again. I mean, I can say I've heard from people that say, don't put a penny into that school invest all you can in another school. But then when you explain like there's an option to save the gym and do these things, then they're a little bit more excited because they see that there's opportunities. So I think we all could say that we're hearing different things. Okay, that's right. So what's the loss in doing it? What What's the harm of, of doing it and we showing that? We don't have that? enough money. 
what's the harm of showing it and let the people decide? We already, we already did that. that though. Yes, but you have to remember when you looked at those plants, some of the stuff. I'm that not. Was being I'm done, not willing to go down that road anymore. We need to start moving forward. I think we can move forward that way. No, we, good we can't. The people that I've talked to over there, yes, at first it's like we want our kids back over there. Now they're like, yeah. I'd be happy if we just got the gymnasium. If we did something with the theater, we got something over there. That's the people I've talked to. And if we don't but hit there are mark, people that want it, I'm sure. If we don't hit our mark for November, we don't get to another vote till February. And then it's a special election or May. I mean, we're just, that's additional cost too, right. which doesn't give us the right to just push ahead. I totally, I'm not saying that, but I'm fearful that We've got interest in the community. We've done this survey. We have a very positive review of our staff, of our school, and what's happening. Awareness that our facilities need help. If we lose that momentum, then what happens? Do they just... And my fear is, too, if we don't listen to the survey, they're going to be like, well, why even survey? You didn't even listen to us. So... And I have a big concern about opening Port Island back up. And we, the other day, Mr. Menton and Mr. Benson were serving dinner to everybody. And we have high schoolers helping out. We we can't find the staff to work here, let alone two buildings. The staff follows the grades, though. Well, I I get the teacher thing. I get that. But then we have two cafeteria sets of two two sets of cafeteria workers. When we can't even get one for Olivia, we're already short staffed in Olivia. I think we need to move forward with this plan. That's my well. Opinion. I I think we should move forward, but I can see two plans. And we've already looked at those plans. Those were we've not had five plans. plans. Those are not the plans anybody on the board gave or gave the okay. Like I liked them. Well, no one's given an okay for anything yet. Well, these these are we just they've got a lot of input on these on input on this. Why can't we have one on the K three four coming back? Because nobody wa wants that. Not yeah. nobody. I mean, there's maybe a few small people that want that, but like the large majority of the survey and everything that's been shown is that it's not desired right now, and we don't have the money for it. I would agree. The LTFM funds that's based on the age of the school, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, it's. It up to a certain age, uh, newer schools get less, but the it goes up to the 35 years, I yeah, think, and it maxes it's out, so it doesn't keep rolling. You get 200, I think it's 280, 280 dollars per pupil unit, and if your building, if your average age building is 35 years and newer, they, they match it down. Even doing your renovation, week, you're still over 35. Yep. So uh, you're not, you're not going to so lose it. So do we lose it in Bird Island by not having? It's per pupil. You said not per facility or anything. It's just per pupil. Right. 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 It's All right. right. All right. Yeah. It, uh, it affects your average age by taking that square footage off, but your average age is still old enough here. So. All right. Good question. Mm. I, my reason was just if, the, if we got more funds by yeah. including Rhode Island, somehow that would be something to tip the table a little bit. But um, it doesn't. As those programs evolved, you aren't the first person to have thought of that, and that's why they, <laughs> they closed that loophole. But yeah, that was people would keep score footage to. It was originally only open to the large districts, and so districts are doing this just to become a large district. And the state said, "Well, this isn't what we're you know in terms of being efficient. This isn't the right idea." We're, we're so they took that and sent it away. The, 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 for what it's worth, the discussion that y'all are having tonight is, is um, while it can be uncomfortable, it's very healthy in terms of coming to some sort of consensus. Um, and, um, you know, again, I, 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 I think we probably need the opportunity, we as, you know, as a collectively need the opportunity to come back and, and you know, digest this a little bit, come back and, and, and uh, talk through it again. Um, We'll put together anything you want. What it's it's not that it couldn't be done, but I I would um, respectfully discourage you from kind of sending two plans out to brush fire survey. That the, the whole point of a brush fire survey is to have focus on on a plan to say we have the right plan. Um, again, not that it couldn't be done, but that kind of that takes away from the way it's supposed to work. And I think that plan can that that survey could have something there that, that allows people to say, um, "I like it, but we're not doing enough." That 
and they could have some feedback. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to have feedback on this solution that we're on, and they might say, I hate it because, right. because of this reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's a brush fire survey. It's a phone survey again. It is, yes. To approximately the same amount of people. That Correct. Would be different. It, well, it, it would be different people, but this, well, highly likely different people, but the same number because it is. Yes. Yes, yeah. right. Okay. So the same pool, so safety samplings and demographic. Yeah. How many questions? We typically keep it, um, I want to say, to about 25. The original survey was, what, about 60? Yeah. yeah. So it tends to be very focused, quick. Um, quick, I'm sorry, just the calls are still like 10 minutes long. It's not like it's 30 seconds. I'm sure I missed that. That goes out to the same uh, piece of the survey. survey. It's, it's, yeah, it's random, but the same quantity. Same quantity as the very first. Yeah. Could be the same or... It, 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 statistically, it's unlikely, but it could be. Question on there. Um, yeah, it's less expensive. It, it depends on the final number of questions, but they're typically, I want to say, around 15, maybe 10 to 15,000. Yeah. Uh, the first one was high. Yeah, the first one, I think, was 20 or 25. Mail out to everybody. Oh no no that that, that 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 was before us. That was a different type of survey. Well, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, I, I don't. They're, they're typically. I, I can't speak directly for you guys, but I'm very familiar with that type of survey. When you add up the the printing costs and the cost of of uh, to develop the survey, um, that's paid to the survey company, and then typically the district has the printing and postage costs. When you add those together. They're typically they're usually similar to a, a phone survey. Would a mailing would be on better the, so we could send the plan along with that? Um, it can be. The problem with it is uh, those surveys are um, um, notorious for being uh, very biased because the people that fill them out are usually on definitively on one side or the other. So then so they, the they, they, they sorry, yeah, you know, with the random, then you're just getting random. Yeah, the random is really talking to everybody that is like it's a likely conversation. The, the last time we did this, that the survey we mailed out, those results showed that this was going to pass. Yeah, very promising. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and that was a, I don't know, $12,000 survey? Oh, okay. And that was probably without the postage and stuff. That was our. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm just it probably was. I don't. Yeah. I, I won't speak to that. But. Yeah. We've we've utilized them both the the phone survey. Um, statistically, it's more accurate. The advantage uh, of a mail survey is it uh, serves a dual purpose of educating the community and here's what the board is thinking. But the results themselves are well, you experience there's somewhat flawed. But. but uh, I think the district is exploring, like we've talked already, doing some sort of communications anyways, just that. not only about the facility project, but just connecting better. Because out of the first day of yes. the survey, you heard that people want something tangible in the mail to read, to be educated, but yet word of mouth is their biggest way to connect. So Yeah, the, 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 it's a great point, Jackie. One of the things that the survey uncovered, and um, I was, Peter and I have worked together for 25 years and we talk a lot and he really reads in between the lines and he says you can really tell I'm not knocking the district at all just saying it is a need here because the district isn't really controlling the narrative about the district in the community because there isn't a uh, an effective form of communication again it's not just is what it is I'm not pointing the finger at anybody um and one of the things that we find also is we have umpteen ways to communicate with people today. Social media, this email, website, blah, whatever. Electronic means a hard copy uh, uh, newsletter or what have you is still more effective and people actually read it. And that and, that, and that's not age dependent, it's it's everywhere. So um, it is a uh, it is something that uh, the district should work on. Um, separate from the referendum, but just yeah, obviously it would go hand in hand. Going back, going back to Bird Island again, uh, I see it at a question too. I like the demo of the east side. Uh, Teresa, I, I hear you. I'm not, <laughs> but no matter what happens in Bird Island, at some point I think we need to have. So, Mark, I'm kind of looking at you. Is on that east side, 
is there a group that wants to take ownership or control of that east side? And, you know, at what point does that need to be decided? Because otherwise I'd highly recommend that demo of that east side has got to be a question one. I mean, we don't yeah, want to leave the school like district or city of Rhode Island with a building that doesn't have a plan that needs a lot of work. It has to be included. And then it comes back to a vote. I mean, you can use some other funds, but I, at some point, I think someone's going to have to step up and say, yeah, we're going to take, we want to take ownership of that east side. We're going to take it. I know there's some fire stuff, sprinkler system that has to get divided to get that off. Um, I don't know when or how does that happen or what, I don't, what, what do we see there? Yeah, and then all, then it all can be separated and we actually took that into account with the west side by putting a new water service in just to serve that. And okay. connected to names where they came in. So, so a complete separation. So mechanically that would be in your plan. But yeah. then just as far as the school district not being left, or the city of Bird Island being left for something like Sacred Heart, for example, uh, the school ended up paying for it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we don't want to have to come back. I, I think that should be, I mean, if somebody feels different, that's fine, but I'd really like to see something in place before this goes to referendum and say, all right, here's the plan on the east side. Uh, believe me, I'm the last one to take down anything that has some <laughs> value in it. Uh, but I've been through the building as well, and I mean, you know, even if you did a pre-K or something, uh, east side would probably get rebuilt or have to come down and get uh, but I just really think that's something that somehow needs to get decided before it goes to referendum. If there's not a good plan in place or a remodel plan, if not it's feasible, I'm all in favor of leaving that south side or kitchen. If there's anything that can be utilized, used, any business, community, whatever, but specifically that the three structure, the three uh, level site there, I think, should be included in this referendum, I think. But I'm a, Mark, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm not trying to push anybody. Well, is... um, well the, uh, excuse me. Oh, you're good. Um, I'm assuming there's demo on everything on the east side then. So just plan, it all comes down. Is there a demo figure? Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so right now we have a number to demo that and put uh, a new parking lot there. And I think what Brad is asking is, is I have to talk about this question too. And he's afraid, you know, if question one passed and two didn't, we have the building stand and everything. What's the status with the island hub? And yeah, so like he has right. it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Because it's, that's another benefit for the island. If the playground gets done, that buildings are cleaned up, we have a nice parking lot that would allow more community events and such maybe to take place just by having that. Theater but events. If somebody has a plan. Stuff. Fantastic. I just don't Mark, know. Were you planning on using still that three story? Okay. No, so no, there's no plan for that at all. I don't think anybody would ever use that three story. So, okay. okay. But you would use that the cafeteria side, or that first level, that one level, right? Right. You right. use the east side of the left. That goes right the cafeteria. Yeah. And that yeah. east wing, that new east wing from the cafeteria now would be used. Or just the south side. Well, I was going to have to say about three, uh, two classrooms, two or three classrooms, three classrooms, north of the kitchen, three classrooms, up to the, uh, the east entry, and then one class to the one side of that. There's two on the south, the right here to the cafeteria. Okay. I can't remember all that lays in there right now. What's the feasibility or the cost associated with trying to get that three structure down right. uh, with, with that? But maybe that is that something we could get a number on? We could. We did have a, uh, a demo contractor. We, we Yes. Um, we did ask that, and um, I'll ask it again, and we have them, have them come in. And we, we bid this out. I'm not saying that this is one contract, but um, he did have expressed his serious concerns of trying to demo three story and not damage anything on either side, on all three sides. That's, 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 he, was, he, was, he, he spent so much money on protection that it was very yeah, I don't think I'll just get four classrooms on the north, north, east corner, so they're really going to be able to do that. It's kind of a little terrifying. Yeah, well, we want the demo contract to them, actually, just because that's not something price that we hate. It's trying to surgically knock down on them. But Jim, maybe. Jim, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, uh, demo on that and leaving the portion around, or have you booked it all at that? 
sledgehammer. <laughs> no, I, a lot of hand work. I mean, I mean to try to save. It may get harder. But what you move in those few classrooms that help a lot. Is there any way in so talking we, with your? Friend? My feeling is anyway. I think we should have something. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is some plan, and that should get pushed into question one. I just don't want to like, leave that hanging out there. If it's an eyesore, it's got to come down. Just, should fit into one somehow. So, so I should, I should, I should, I should, I should, or, I should revise them. Mark, looking at this. Revise the number to get to everything. Just to confirm before I do. Yep. To do is to, uh, basically what Mark said is, is take these classrooms, the center section of these classrooms, and see what the cost of that versus the whole thing. I, I was like, right, Aaron. Sorry. No, that's fine. I was just going to say, now kind of seeing this with the island hub, I mean, not to take away space, but is there, any opportunity to do anything different new what's left to still meet your needs and, and your goals or by removing I think what she's saying is, is there is no real school plan school use for these areas of green. So it, it, it's a partial community recovery. Yeah. Would that part work for the island? I'll right. It's not as much of a place I get it, but would you want would that be of any value Does that help with anything that with your long-term goals. <clears throat> our our long-term goals is, is to have an asset for Iowa's as yes. members of the community. Uh, so uh, part of it was uh, maintaining the gym, the two gyms, uh, which is in this plan, uh, having a community space, which is in this plan. Uh, the other, uh, <clears throat> they were designed a co-worker spaces out of the west, but the turn was into locker rooms. Uh, uh, we would have put a locker room on the east side of that gym, outside new construction. That's about a million. I think I was surprised to see that the locker rooms on the interior all the way would be the two locker rooms on the outside, but that's what we do right there. Uh, and then the south side, you know, I'm kind of be creating office and a warehouse space for uh, more computers. And then we'd be looking at uh, the closing of the, the ballroom. The gym would become an event center with a lobby going over the cafeteria that would be uh, an event center uh, with uh, real prep and uh, events and those kinds of things. So that would, uh, that would be diminished in this plan. Uh, uh, and then we would use some space for uh, art workshops and so forth. Those could conceivably be moved in the, in the community space as you have some community kinds of building art workshops. Uh, and, uh, those kinds of things, um, real life senior program, they were doing, uh, kind of joining the pivot with why. Um, so, I think if you could, if you could not get a copy of this to you, you got to think about you, you had the master plan. If you could have everything, how would you, if you if you got a portion of it, and how you might program it, how you might use it? it does it legally work for an event center to I mean, rent out a gym? Can we can school do that for other events? Does that work? Were you having alcohol? Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, yeah, that's I mean, kind of the big red flag, months, right? It's not school months. <laughs> we'd, we'd have to look into that. I don't know if somebody else rented it. Perhaps I, I'm not sure. I know it's illegal it. as it stands. I, maybe that's something to find out too before we. I agree. I mean, I, believe me, what you're doing is fabulous for the community. I, Want to save as much as anyone thinks they can give us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but if you could mesh them somehow, yeah, I mean, and with your a, state, like we have a board meeting Monday, so we can. That might have that might have something to do with accesses and doors and such in that area right away. How divisions that may take place, so. I, just thinking, uh, so uh, the, the one thing I do like is, is and, I, and I, understand, I understand this is a not a school. I, mean, I fully get it, but it'd be nice to get parking over here for you guys. That don't have it. Yeah. But to Mark's point, if it's a million to do the locker rooms there, do you leave that as is? It's not a million. I'm, oh, I'm okay. 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 I didn't look. Three percent in the last year, years. Okay. So, yeah, Got it. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we no, been, it's okay. We've we, we been working every month, and I wish it was a million dollars. Okay. And, and even if the cafeteria area did stay, 
it'd still all be parking lot from there north. You'd still have a huge parking lot. Yeah, if you, if you cut it like here, you could have parking here, and you have to get this part. Um, or, so maybe if you think about if there's any, just like the district might have to reduce the, the, what they get, maybe, I don't know, might think about how to use a smaller square footage. Um, so and, and where you check on the legality of shared space like that. I mean, Redwood does it, right? And yeah. And so it must be some way of doing it. It's yes. Who owns it? Well, the school owns. So when you do events, the school owns the field house. So all of the rentals would go, like it would get split between the city and the school because one would staff, one would not. But the, the contract itself would be, um, if it's in the school with them, if it was in the field house, it was a city because they had operating rights. But when it came to alcohol, that was not a possibility. Um, and we're not we so were lucky to be able to have a mass um, in the Nuwam Diocese celebrated, um, you know, a very small amount, but that that was one hiccup. Yeah, you have a joint powers agreement. And, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's look you up with the city of Bolivia because mm -hmm. that joint powers agreement was made before it was sold with mm -hmm. the school district that was Olivia only. Um, you, so you'd have a you'd have a maybe a smaller board of some sort and you divvy up who's in charge of what and who's who's making decisions and, and right. maybe you know depending x amount of dollars goes into a fund to help with repairs or supplies or things like that there's a variety of ways that you can split it up but definitely I mean, it's, it's a good opportunity to work amongst two entities so uh, the school can be only one part of it, or and then the better party can be only the other part of it. Mm -hmm. saying, so, and then it's hard to give you the responsibilities and uh, make sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a nice thing was the uh, HVAC systems that's divided already. That, yeah. that all fits with that. So I think quite nice thing. Same way, kind of individually, just to be able to use that space. Yeah, makes sense. Which doesn't necessarily address. Question. Well, there'll be kids there. It's just going to be reimagined, right? In a different way. I mean, I don't know. When you first presented the board, the options A, B, C, and D originally, my original thought was I love B because it had maybe the early childhood over there and then had the gym space over there. So I don't know if getting early childhood over there, is that even off the ticket? Is that, I don't know, would that free up more space in Olivia? But when, when we had that survey come out and we're down to $15, then that kind of changed my opinion. So it's like, well, that's what we got to work with is $15. Mm -hmm. Boy, probably, I don't have a whole list to share, but the impact of being where it is when the early childhood steps that we don't want to do by ourselves. That's like, oh, so just so you know, uh, but that doesn't that. require a kitchen, did, right? Did they give a reason right. why they didn't want to be by themselves? Just Dropping the shit yeah. off at the locations. Yeah, different locations. Um, they felt like, no pun intended, probably Grand Island. Um, uh, it's actually a lot more than that. They, yeah. they, they, they're afraid. Right now, they feel like a, a, a real part of what's going on. Uh, you know, when we have something like uh, homecoming, the homecoming candidates. Went down and read to the to the kids. It's not that we couldn't ship people over to do something like that. It just makes things doing those shared activities like that with the older kids so much easier. We've got kids that that for their uh, instead of a study hall, they'll get, get partial credit for helping teachers down here, uh, working with the kids. So that that's that's their concern. It, it, it would be more expensive because we'd have to. Um, this enough to be configured for classrooms. You have to get restrooms in here. And how many? Oh, it, it, more, it, was, it was more about really what Jim said is feeling part of the school community. Or like you say, like being part of the school community here. They said we were no different than giving our teachers a lot of kids and not treat them like the, the, the other aspect that we've heard in other communities is when parents you know, have multiple kids, they prefer to go to one school as opposed to at a pre K, F K, or that not applies here, but that's we have heard that consistently. It didn't test well with staff, and it didn't test well with task force. Is now just looking at what other people have said. 
And that's to answer your question. That's why we went with eight years. And early childhood, early childhood may also have OT and PT speech um, services, and then those people would have to travel back and forth as well. If you're trying to do some inclusion, which I voted for um, with my daughter, so you know, it's not just the teachers. It's not just maybe one or two parents. You've got services as well for inclusion. Um, and then where do you put the special ed classroom? Do you put it right next to the to the inclusion classroom, or do you leave them here and then just send the Neurotypical kids. Okay. Right, right. They do. They do have snacks. They they use uh, our milk. So that'd be another. We have two deliveries. Another uh, area for milk over there. Uh, and then our Head Start does eat here. So I mean that's another thing that the goals on scene where like, they eat in their classroom, but. Over the years, one of the data that said it was best to have the kids separated elementary, middle school, high school. Isn't it quite a benefit? It, it's, um, it's really meant to be. We're, we're trying to do it with schools, but then the schools kind of have to be here. That's why we're, you know, that's why we're having. The elementary early child is for self contained over here. Elementary is self self contained over here. So you want them to have their own where they feel the, the scale of their, their little mini community and school is together. So we are trying to do that. Early childhood, elementary, middle school, high school. But but then things that you can share, so you don't have duplication, you can share a kitchen, you can share a music room, you can share an office and you know, and that's another reason why we split the toilets too. Right now, you've got these toilets, you have elementary kids using toilets and high school kids, and we don't want that. We want high school kids to have you high school kids, you use these toilets and this toilets, elementary kids, you use these ones and these ones. So kind of we're trying to get some separation between them. I'd like to add they just built that school in the last 20 years and they've added on twice because they're getting kids from Fargo and West Fargo because of the smaller school district and they've gotten um, a ton of awards and stuff for some of their other programming where they're using high school students to in the classroom. Yeah, what you said, kids okay. go to Hush, they have an elementary middle, high school middle. Yeah, you're getting surprised when you get big yeah. enough. Yeah. It makes sense because they're they have like six small tiny towns that are sizing like William going in together to one location on top of some kids that are being bus And I know we're over budget already now, but I also feel very strong about the playground with like Lillian and just recognizing they're still part of our district. I, I really Does should. anybody know when they close that school? When Rhode Island and Lake Lillian combine and when they close the Lake Lillian school? Well, and were people upset? I mean, just as a point of reference, were people upset like they were in Danny or Sacred Hearts? I mean, it's happening all over, but. Sure they were. Sure they were. I just feel like somehow we have to make sure that we recognize they're part of the district. I mean, we're not going to clearly, we're not putting facilities there, but we want to make sure that, I don't know, maybe it's not a $200,000 playground. I mean, I grant, oh, I, like I get, yeah, you don't get much for 100000 so I understand that, but, and maybe there's something else that the community would prefer, but just to keep that in perspective. So we meet again? Yeah, so I'd say, where do we go from here? It's, you know, we've been going here two and a half hours, we'll stay as long as you want, or I think everyone's probably getting a little saturated. Should we find a reconvene in two weeks? Or what, uh, what makes sense? I'd like to go through the checklist and take some time to digest it. Yeah, that's that's again. Absolutely. 
I really like how you guys presented it. Mm -hmm. I think two weeks is good. I, a month's too long. I mean, yeah. if you get stuff, then just yeah. keep keep moving. I yeah. think. With, and if you're with trying God. to be on that timeline, you almost have to. Not that we're pushing, but if you want to stick with that timeline, then it makes sense to go in two weeks. Could, can we do Wednesday the seventeenth? So we've got EA negotiations, but that starts at seven. So that works. All right. F four. We'll send that invite. All right. Four, yeah. okay. I did ask for a little more information. All right. Well, we've got plenty of stuff to look at. Uh, feel free to contact me if you've got questions. I can I can find the answers. But we're looking at the seventeenth. Well, seventeen, four o'clock. Thank you, everybody. All the numbers that we were able to pull against that was 100%. Correct? All the numbers that were put in the full expenses that was 100% cost. That was the or was that taking half of it? Oh, 100%. I mean, 100% cost is what's going on. Yeah, so yeah, we were a shared cost with the city. Yeah, no, no that, that's, that's what, what yeah, yeah, we're giving you the data to go back to the same page. Are you really truly paying your fair share? Correct. Yeah. <laughs>